All right, good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, April 4th at, I call the meeting of the Brookfield Select Board to order at 619. Please stand and join me, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, announcements, um, Brookfield Ecumenical Food Pantry at St. Mary's Church is uh, seeking donations of condiments, paper products, liquid hand soap, shampoo, and laundry detergent. Items may be dropped off Wednesdays or Saturdays from 9.30 to 11 a.m. at the Food Pantry at St. Mary's Church at the corner of Lincoln and Howard Streets. Also, this meeting is being recorded, and if anyone in the audience is recording, would you please indicate that you are doing so? Uh, yes, Mr. Kelleher. And she'll be back. All right, and all right, we've got three cameras rolling. Brad, would you do the warrants for us, please? Uh, FY 2420 payroll, $201,863.18. FY 2420 accounts payable, $58,015.29. FY 2420 withholding, $31,762.59. All right, thank you, sir. All right, let's move on to the agenda. We've got a busy one and let's get rolling. So the first one, uh, Dennis, would you join us to talk about Arbor Day? Thank you, sir. So the, the National Arbor Day Foundation has a program called Tree City USA. And it's an awards program that provides public attention and national recognition for local commitments to community trees and forests. To be part of the program, there's four requirements, most of which we're already doing, so I thought it'd be nice if we could get involved in the program. The first requirement is a tree board or department, and this can be a forestry department, a tree board, which we have, or a volunteer board or committee that oversees the community's annual work plan. A tree care ordinance, which I don't believe we have, but you can simply adopt the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 87, the shade tree law. If the select board officially adopts that, that qualifies for that requirement. I think we have to take that to town meeting. But don't okay. we have a shade tree uh, warden? We do have a shade tree warden. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. We do Pleasure. also have a shade tree, so that, uh, but we, we need the ordinance. The third requirement is a spending of a minimum of $2 per capita of your annual budget on tree, tree care and maintenance, which we do. And the fourth requirement is an Arbor Day observance and proclamation, which we did last year and I'm planning on doing again at the end of the month at the police station, uh, pending approval from the police chief, which I haven't asked yet. But um, <laughs> we did it last year, Tom was there, but we would need an official mayor or select board um, proclamation so you read the Arbor Day proclamation uh, chair of the select board signs it and that's the four requirements to be part of this program and uh, they have like an awards thing where you get assigned for your community and a public announcement saying that we take care and have a commitment to our trees if that would be something the select board would be interested in doing uh, let's see all right so let's see the um, Arbor Day observance that's easy the uh, tree warden that's already in the bucket um, the uh, two dollars per resident for trees. What are we about? Yeah, Thirty-five hundred residents. Yeah, we're way over that right now. Yeah, yeah. But that includes the uh, warrant article money we spent. Well, no, right? not even we, just our regular we annual the budget. Fifteen thousand in the annual budget. Yeah. Okay. Meets that requirement. And oh, then, for the uh, for the uh, tree work in the annual, in the operating budget. Yeah, the, yeah, that's been in the operating budget. Okay, that's. that's and fine. then the the only thing would be to officially adopt the tree care ordinance, and simply adopting the the current Massachusetts law qualifies. And, and which section of MGL is that? It's Chapter 87, the Shade Tree Law. All right. Because that's not that's that's not on the agenda, so I don't think we can discuss that today. No, I just but wanted like, to bring but it something, to but I want to know what to put on the agenda. Yeah. And um, uh, the only commitment I'd like to get from you is is to see if someone would do the proclamation at Arbor Day, because that's coming date? up at the what end of the, the month. Date? The, the application for this doesn't go in until the no, end of the year. No, when's the date of the... The 28th, of the Sunday the 28th at noon. Okay. Pending so, approval from the police chief, which I haven't asked him yet. But he said yes last year, so I'm I assuming... Can be, you... I can be available virtually any Sunday. Okay. So. okay. And this yeah. is Sunday, April 28th? April 28th, yeah. I mean, if someone else wants to do it, fine. But if we need a fallback, I, have, I can be the fallback. I have children's birthdays that are like... Yeah. yeah. I got three birthdays it's, right it, in a row. 
It won't take long. It'll be a proclamation, a quick tree planting demonstration, and then uh, that, that meets the requirement. Yeah, I have something the 27th, but I don't have anything the 28th, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one you so planted last I, year is going to creep this year. Can I, I make remember. a motion that Sing. we... Oh, yes, it's yes. Sleep, All right, yep, sleeps, creeps, and leaps. Yep, hopefully it'll take off. I'd like to make two motions. First of all, is our warrant still open? I know we have a draft in front of us, but... Um, I believe the warrant is open at the moment. Okay. I'm 90% sure, Dennis, that we, in order to adopt the Mass General Law officially, mm -hmm. we have to have town meeting vote that in lieu of a bylaw that okay. we're adopting Mass General Law. And when is the town meeting? That's in June. Not until June. Well, this, the application for this won't go in until the end of the year. Perfect. But I'm here now because of the Arbor Day coming yeah, up. Absolutely, <laughs> right? So yeah. so the advantage we have is if it's not due till the end of the year, we have, we have plenty town of time. meeting to, to do yeah. it. So I'd like to make a motion that we place uh, an article uh, encouraging the town to adapt uh, Chapter 87 of the Mass General Laws um, in lieu of a local uh, tree care ordinance bylaw. Second. All right. Uh, let's see. All in uh, any discussion? All right. Um, all in favor of of that of the motion, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then can I'll, I'll also make a motion that we support this by um, making an official select board proclamation, which actually our presence doesn't even need to be. No, at you your just event. have to sign we the actual to, proclamation that I can read. Yeah. So I'd like to make a motion that we. Um, uh, su support and and sign the Arbor Day proclamation that get that Dennis will be submitting to us. Second. All right. Is there an official proclamation? There, we, is there is there a template that we can use, or do we need to? There is an official proclamation. I can get that to you. Okay. All right. Then. Uh, all right. Without the without. Without the text of the proclamation, how do we handle this? Just uh, I'll make a motion that you're authorized to sign on behalf of the board any proc any proclamation you find you agreeable <laughs> between yourself and Dennis. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> all right. So, or, we, or you guys can delegate it to me. So right. Someone can amend the motion to, to mm -hmm. make me the signatory. I don't all right. I'll, I'll treat that as an amendment to the motion on the table that Brad has <laughs> seconded. And all in favor of amending the motion, please to include authorization for me to sign. Please say aye. Aye. Right. Aye. Aye. All right. And now back to the original motion to uh, to sign the proclamation. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of signing the Arbor Day Declaration uh, or approving signature of the Arbor Day Declaration, please say aye. 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 All right. So we got the declaration. All right, Dennis. If you can get me that text, I will, then, then I'll I can sign on behalf of the uh, of the board. Great. Thank you for your time. All thank right. You. Thank you. All right, and let's see. And it is 6.26, which is a few minutes earlier than Peter DeFlorio's assigned time, but what do you guys think? Do we, can we take it earlier because it's on there at 6.30? Do we have to wait until 6.30? It's not a public hearing, so. It's just a courtesy time? Yeah, I mean, if you want, we can skip to. No, it's much easier for me to do things in order. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> right. I was going to say we could accept the resignation and approve the select board minutes, and by then we would probably mm -hmm. be to the mm -hmm. be there. But yeah, I'd, if I jump around, then I miss things. Gotcha. All right, so I'd, I, I so I'd like to do that. So, uh, Peter, would you join us? Welcome. Hey, Peter, how are you doing? I'm well, sir. All right. Welcome. So Beth, you reviewed okay. this first, so. I did, so, so. so um, I got authorization from the select board to do a phone screen um, at the last select board meeting relative to some of our applicants for the permanent, the permanent position for highway superintendent. Um, there were two resumes available. One was Mr. DeFlorio's, the other was the uh, a person from kind of in close to Boston who was more of a professional engineer type and doing the resume screen I determined that the only phone screen I would conduct was Mr. DeFlorio's. Uh, we had a nice conversation I think it ran about 40-45 minutes um, and I'll let him introduce himself relative to his background but in talking to him it appeared that he had 
most of the licensure that we were looking for. He's got a solid background, most recently in water, but with some early career work, you know, in more of a uh, laborer role relative to, to highway and that sort of work. Um, he's got some, um, a lot of mentorship that he's received from Gary in the past. Um, and he comes with some, um, at, at least, uh, uh, warm references of some of the folks in surrounding departments that he's working with now in the in the towns that he's working in now. So I also brought a list of references for you. As That's well. awesome. Thank you for that. So um, so that said, I, I felt it would be advantageous to the town to put him in front of the rest of the board sooner rather than later, because mm -hmm. uh, I felt he was a strong candidate. So. Thank you. So Peter, tell us about yourself. Did you is it do you prefer Peter or Pete or Pete? All right, Pete, tell us about yourself. Um, well, I've, been, uh, I've had a Class A CDL now for over 30 years. I used to drive a tractor trailer. Um, I started off with Rutland DPW in 2010 um, as part of the Highway Sewer Division, um, where we would do everything from paving roads to rebuilding catch basins, um, there was a lot of shop time. I was also a fill-in mechanic, where I could be a mechanic for one week or two months, or whenever needed. It, you know, because um, we would have trucks break down in a storm, and one of us would have to get them going. So if the mechanics were busy, I would jump in and help fix them. Um, I went to the water division, um, running the treatment plant and distribution system, but I was still continuing to work with highway. Um, I have over 30 years of plow and snow, um, spotless driving record, uh, no accidents, no tickets. Uh, so in 2020, I went to work for the town of Paxton to be their water department foreman, which being a small department, still helping highway as they help me on the water side when I have an emergency. Um, so we have a very good working relationship there as well. Um, pretty much everything DPW related I've done in one capacity or another, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be tree work, um, you know, basic work, even just cold patching roads. You know, the, the best way to save a failing road is to fill the potholes in because otherwise a hole this big turns this big in a minute. Mm -hmm. So. Pavement maintenance is a big thing. Um, I am very familiar with the Chapter 90 process as far as filing with the mass pit form for the engineers to overlook, the bidding process, um, and the, the construction process as well. Because even though you hire a contractor, you still have to oversee that contractor to make sure that you're getting the product that was bid. Because mm -hmm. there's a big difference between one inch of pavement and two inches. Right. So. You always have to be leery of that and careful with that, even with a respected contractor. Um, complete streets, Beth and I had talked about it. I am not certified in that, but I would, I would be able to take a free course through Bay State Roads uh, mm -hmm. to get that done. I do have my, like I said, Class A CDL. I have my 2A hoisting. Um, I would get the 4E and 4G and the 1C, uh, which I saw was a requirement, um, but that's not a problem to get those. Two A's the main one, anyway. That's yeah. Right. So. Um, question that I have offhand, and I don't know where we stand with it, is do you have any water certifications? Because I know. Yes. I have treatment one, treatment three, distribution two, backflow device testing, um, asbestos pipe. Yeah. One of, one of the things that, that Pete and I discussed was that he's, even though. He may be a little bit, a little bit outside what's typically the response area for like our water. Oh backup, right, right. Because there's there's right. You got to live within a he, certain. He's a, he might be a little bit outside of that for us, but considering that we're a small community, yeah, it would still be better than, you know, our current situation. Right. And mm -hmm. so mutual aid between the departments would be a lot easier where he comes Because if he's involved. here, then you don't have to call mutual aid. Right. Exactly. Um. So. Um. From my house to here is 20 minutes. Oh, it's, it is 20 minutes? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, great. So actually, he's 
right on the line. Okay. <laughs> I think GPS said it was 14 miles. I yeah. didn't clock it. But yeah, so it's a, I'm not far I, away. I think it's supposed to be like a, a, a 20 or 30 minute response time okay. relative to like a water emergency, something along mm -hmm. those lines. So. So, and, and the advantage also is coming from water back over into kind of like a, a highway scenario. I think there's there's a great opportunity there to kind of really rebuild the the mutual aid between the two departments. That, that was one a lot of discussion that Beth and I had on the phone where I work well with police departments, fire departments, water you know other water departments, highway. Um, I depend on highway heavily when I have an emergency because right now it's only myself on the water department. Um, we are in the process of hiring another person, but licensing is an issue. There's not too many licensed operators out there anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, I've always had a very good working relationship with other departments. And even project-wise, if you're going to have a, a road paved, you want to inspect your culvert pipes under the road, make sure they're not disappearing, especially if you're a straight south town, because if they galvanize, they're going to disappear. Now everything's plastic in the ground. Um, you have to coordinate with the water department. Do they have plans to upgrade a water main? Uh, I did see some markings coming through town for a gas main. Get a hold of the gas company, find out what their plans are, because you don't want to tear up a brand new road right. if they have plans to put new, uh, new mains in the ground. Um, so in your ro role now or what you've done before, have you been in a supervisory function? Yes. Okay. That's where I am currently. Yeah. But you, you are the only one on the department or? No, I, I've had other employees, but yeah. they move on to greener pastures. Yeah. They trade the shovel full of mud for a pen basically. <laughs> and I get it. I'm, I'm happy for, you know, you know three guys now. Yeah, so they all moved on to, to yep. more more responsible roles or two of my former employees drove by me the other day when I was getting out of a hole full of mud and they could not stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but I've always had a good working relationship with not only the the people that work for me, but the people that work with me. Um, yeah. Even this morning, one o'clock in the morning, the highway foreman called me because he had trucks break down and he was short of help. So I went in and plowed all night and all day. Well, thanks you know, for still making it here. So I appreciate no, that. No problem. <laughs> it's it's one hand washes the other. You know, and, and even Paxton has their own light department. I work very closely with those guys. Uh, if I have an emergency, they have an emergency. Today they set ten telephone poles. It was just brutal. So uh, that kept me busy as well because I got to mark out the water mains. I don't want them putting an auger through them. Right. <laughs> that would be bad. Yes, that would be very bad. <laughs> so you are you running the water department now? Yes. Okay. And how many positions report to? Uh, typically two. Typically two. Okay. So it's it's a three person department. Yeah. Okay. It hasn't been for a while. It's only been myself and one other gentleman for a little while, uh, mainly because we can't find help. Mm -hmm. Un understood. That's a very difficult thing nowadays. Mm -hmm. so, and if you do find help, they don't have any licenses and, mm -hmm. you know. You have to grow them up yourself and then they leave you once you're, they're qualified to work. Yeah, when, once you spend thousands more. of dollars to help them get their license, then they leave. Yeah. I'm, so. I'm tempted to tell my son to either train to become a, uh, a water operator or a uh, town treasurer. <laughs> they, seem, they seem to be in tight supply right now. Tell them to stay in treatment. <laughs> 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 it's a lot easier on the body, believe me. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I've got a question. Uh, let's see. Um, for project management, um, give me give me some examples of the projects, or, or describe some projects that you've managed. Um, mainly emergency projects, um, where I will have a crew of seven to eight guys. Um, even recently, we had a, a water main break on Route 31, and the main was 12 feet down. My biggest goal is safety and make sure that everyone goes home with 10 fingers, 10 toes at the end of the day, um, especially when you're working that deep in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, everything's high visibility, especially when you're working on the road. Um, it's 
safety, 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 no matter what you're doing, you know, uh, especially if the roads are slippery, take it easy, you know, do your job correctly and you'll be fine to go home. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to see a truck on its side. So, um, you know, like I said, everything is high, vis high visibility. If you're working around the backhoe, hot hats, um, you know, work boots, steel toe work boots, et cetera. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rephrase Mr. Uh, Regan's question, if that's okay. Sure. So, it, since you've been in mostly hands-on positions, um, what's your level of comfort in acquiring the skill set for doing, working with your, your administrator, town grant writer, possibly with some consultants or engineers, mm -hmm to develop something along the lines of a five-year plan for the highway department? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Are, are you comfortable from a standpoint of um, asking for help when you need it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. We learn, we learn new stuff every day. And the only way to learn is asking questions. Computers and email. <laughs> Google is our friend, but not always. <laughs> Sometimes the information does not come out correctly, so. Um, yeah, and the algorithms have gotten ruined recently. <laughs> So. I, I've always had no problem reaching out to someone that would have the correct answer. And I, I've always worked with a lot of engineers on the water and sewer side. Um, so I knew who to reach out to to get the proper answer. Um, and it's basically the same, you know, if, you know, bridge work. I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer. I can look at a bridge and tell you it's going to fall down, but I'm not going to design it and tell you this is what needs to be done. That's what an engineer is for. Um, and I've, I've always worked very well with pretty much everyone I run into. I have a question for you. Tell me about a time when you had an angry customer in your face and how you handled it. Which time? <laughs> a, any time, pick a time. Doesn't it, could be current, could be the worst one that you ever had to deal with. Pick one. Oh, I mean, I, I deal with customers every day. And uh, not only on the water side, but also on the highway side. Um, I've dealt with a lot of angry people, mainly on the water side, especially when they get their bill. Or um, shut up. <laughs> yes. Um, it, it's... You, you have to be kind to them no matter what. If you're rude to a customer, you're in the wrong business. So uh, my motto has always been kill them with kindness and that calms them right down. Because if you get worked up, they're gonna get more worked up and it doesn't end well. So the end result is always to be address their, their complaints in a nice manner and if you answer their, their questions correctly, they may not like the answers, but as long as you're truthful with them, they usually calm down. I haven't had to call the cops on anybody, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but even, you know, plowing snow, you go off the edge of the road a little bit, you tear up their lawn, they're yelling and screaming at you, throwing shovels at your truck. It happens. You go back in the spring, you touch it up. The easiest way to do it and just have a discussion with them don't try to run away from it yeah. but if you have a discussion with them say it happens you know um, we'll be back in the springtime we'll touch it up with some bloom and seed and life will move on great thank you trying to make it right yeah exactly i mean obviously one at a time you're going to take out a mailbox or two and people don't like that but it happens yeah you know? so Give them a temporary one in a bucket full of sand and replace it in the spring. Sorry, the, the bucket full of sand is a little bit of a sore spot right now <laughs> on Central Street. <laughs> Every town has a few of them. <laughs> anyway. And how about managing... Um, the budget and stuff like that for the department budget i'm always very very careful with yeah um i mean everybody says it's christmas in july but it's really not you have to keep that budget very tight all year round because um, you don't want to run short yeah 
never want to run short. And I, from what I've seen, it's a pretty tight budget to start with. And it sounds like you handle the budget yes. currently in the position yes. you're in. Yeah, and it, it's a very tight budget, especially where over half of it goes to the city of Worcester because we buy all the water. So repair parts have tripled. Um, it's, you know the price of everything has gone mm -hmm. through the roof. So um, that puts some projects off to the back burner, um, not only on um, a water side, but a highway side as well, just because, you know, if you're going to buy ADS pipe for culverts, which is a plastic pipe, mm -hmm. if you're looking at triple the price from what it was five years ago. You're doing a third of the jobs. Right. Yeah. Right. And asphalt's gone up as well, so instead of paving a mile of road, you might only be able to pave a half a mile. Yeah, I lost my magic price dropping wand a couple of years ago. I wish I had <laughs> one. <laughs> That's, what, yeah, that's well, why we have Walmart no hasn't gotten into culvert pipe yet. So <laughs> get those price rollbacks. Mm -hmm. Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can ask this question, <laughs> so I'll ask you, I guess. Um, why make the change? Yeah, you can always oh, ask okay. the question. Okay. Um, that's, that's perfectly legit. Yeah, no, that, that's a, actually a very good question. Um, I am happy where I am, but I've always enjoyed the highway side, and water is very difficult on the body, especially when you're the only one in the hole shovel in the mud. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a vector truck, so it's all hand work, and it takes a toll on you, especially when you're doing it 20 times a year, mm -hmm. if not more. So that's when I kind of made the decision where it's time to go back to the highway side, um, where it's still a lot of good work. I enjoy a good day's work, um, but you're not out there at two in the morning when it's sub-zero out playing with mud. Right. It's yeah, at least you're, if you're out two o'clock in the morning, you're in the warm cab of a truck yeah. plowing. <laughs> you know, I'll be 52 this this year, and it's it's really taken a toll on me. So um, that's when I decided it's time for a change. And I always enjoyed the highway work. Mm -hmm. It's always fun playing with a jackhammer and rebuilding catch basins and stuff like that. It sounds like you're not afraid to get your hands dirty oh, no. and work with the... Because, no. I mean, I, I think that's really important. What we need is a yeah. hands-on. I, I mean, the, the two things that are probably most important is, is being willing to be hands-on with at least the level of hands-on work that we do, mm -hmm. right? And the mechanic and background, given the fact that for a small department, we do have a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of good equipment, but we have a lot of old equipment. Yep. We're not a rich town, so to keep that much equipment, we have to make sure what, when we get it that we just keep it running. Right. right. No, I, I've worked on small trucks, big trucks, heavy equipment. Um, I'm good with all the hydraulics. Uh, so my question was going to be hydraulics. Yep. So. Yep. I pretty much worked on all the equipment that you could have. Um, I mean, I'm obviously not going to rebuild a full diesel motor. <laughs> Granted. Got but, it. Right. Um, but yeah, and it's, I've always enjoyed being, you know, working as a mechanic. Um, and I've always enjoyed working on the road uh, and being hands-on. <clears throat> Never had a problem getting dirty. Yeah. It's just there's just levels of dirty. Right. <laughs> Usually now I go home, I go home and my wife's got to change her clothes in the garage for me. <laughs> 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 now you might actually be able to get into the mudroom first. So there you go. And also, I'm used to being on call 24-7. That, that's been my life for, I can't even tell you how long. Yeah. Yeah. And that will still be the case here. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. As long as you watch the weather forecast, you mostly know when it's coming. You never know when a tree is going to come down, though. That's mm -hmm. true. A tree or a major car wreck or yep. something along those lines. Yep. And 20 minutes isn't bad. So. No, it beats 13 or 14 hours in a hole. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, I think that's my biggest reason for, for leaving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a fair reason. 
I thought so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your biggest concern coming into this position? Like looking at it saying, if, if I got the job, what's the, uh, what's got you going, hmm, that's something I'm going to have to work on. Um, I don't know much about the department, um, but as Beth and I discussed, I currently use a work order system at where I'm at now, and we use it for water, highway, cemetery. Is there a cemetery in town? Are you on C-Click Fix? I'm sorry? Are you on C-Click Fix? No. In Paxton? Okay. Uh, no. I think, uh, they have like, I think they have, it sounded like they have an offline system. Now. Oh, it's yeah. It's just more of it, but it's a ticket-based system. And, right. And what well, we think that's really was, critical for us is having something like that. Uh, this is, yeah. it's, we, kind, it's kind of a spreadsheet, um, just modified a little bit, but you can enter which employees went to the job site or where the job site was and um, the amount of hours that they were there, mm -hmm. then there's a separate column for material used. So if, if you're using, you know, four yards of gravel, you can track that through these work orders. Mm -hmm. And that way you know, you know, okay, we had 10 yards approximately in the yard. Now we know we got to replace three of it, you know. Yeah. So that way, it's, you can you can track both right. the materials. You can track your hours. If Cold somebody patch. asks you what what's uh, what's what's been going on and what's yeah. in your backlog, right? Because if you use a right. ticketing system, then like say you get ten citizen complaints, right? right. Yeah, you ten can, models. You can you can write ten tickets, mm -hmm. and you can let people know where they are in the queue for those tickets. And that's and, been my whole thing is knowing yeah. that. So when people right. approach the select board with an issue. We can at least give them an answer, yeah. or at least tell them where it is in the progress. Yeah. And if something bad happens, guess what? It moved down, but yep. here's where it's at. Yeah. Even even if you have a truck going up cold patching. Yeah. Take a map of the town, break it up into quarters. Okay. This day, pick the northwest quarter. Go out. Go, go take care of all those roads. If you had two ton of fresh cold patch, and you went through half of it, you can write down one ten northwest corner. Mm -hmm. So it's an easier way to keep track of it, and that's an, actually a better way to keep track of where your, all of your potholes are mainly. Right. You know, if the southeast corner, you don't have, you know, you went through a quarter of a ton. That's probably where it's all going right now on Gay Road. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, roads get beat up. It is pothole season, so, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's always nice to track where a majority of the material is going. Yeah. yeah. So... But yeah, that was one thing that we discussed that he's concerned that where we don't have that type of system that getting people used to it, you know, it might get perceived as quote unquote micromanagement, but it's just a standard practice in most no. other communities, yeah. right? And it's and it's to actually help them because then if you've got this huge backlog and he comes to us and says, hey, I need seasonal labor because I've got, you know, a backlog, a backlog, then mm -hmm. right. then we, we have a reason to justify it. And we, yeah, we right? need to know what your needs are to well, be able to... Quantify it. The other good part about doing a system like that is that it takes the human forgetfulness out of it. Right. Where you can go through the work orders every day and say, okay, you know, I got one guy today, so yeah, take care of this, take care of that. Um, so it, there's no, it takes a thought out of it. Where, mm -hmm. Oh, what was I supposed to do today? Mm -hmm. There was something I was, I yeah. keep or, forgetting. Or what's on, what, are, what are the things, what's, what's on the list of things that need to get done? It's like, right. oh yeah. That, that so if there's a separate work order for each job and mm -hmm. it's filled up correctly right. at the end of the day, at least you have a record of who did what, what they used. You know. Yeah, prevents work ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's just say those of us with ADHD use lists a lot anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, you asked about cemetery department. We we do have a, a is the cemetery department? It's a, a, well, we have a cemetery commission. And yes. we have some part-time workers there that do the mowing and keep the cemetery up. Okay. But what no, about what no. about burials? We dig. We'll I think they take. Dig. I think they take care of the bur the uh, burials also, okay. the excavating the hole. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know we're, we're, the warrant has some articles about repaving some of the roads in the cemetery to recommit to that. Reconditioning. Reconditioning. We're working. We're doing road work in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever the whatever our citizen committee decided was the best option. Yeah, we're yeah. going along with that.
I think they went with some sort of chip seal, which is the appropriate material. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I have one big question for you. If you know, um, is the town of Brookfield required to, and do you have an MS4 permit for stormwater? A what? MS4 permit for stormwater management? Ooh, I have no idea. No. Okay. What, what is it? I, I, I'll say no because I have no idea what an MS4 permit is. Okay. It's basically stormwater management. DEP wants to know all of your inlets, all of your outfalls, where the water is going um, to track contamination, et cetera, mm -hmm. so it's not contaminating drinking water. We have to check water. with the water the, to know. And I got, have a, I got a, we do not have an MS4 permit. We do not have an MS4 okay. permit. That's no, good news. Is that, is, that a, is that a permit or is that more of a plan? Because it's like just knowing where the inlets and the outlets are, that doesn't... It is, it is a permit, but you have to report every year which, how many catch basins you cleaned, you know, um, all, everything has to go out and get sampled. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually a headache, and it's in year six right now. So some towns are far behind, and they're trying to play catch up at this point. That's why I asked that question, because... You didn't know if we were playing catch up. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. it's... DEP's really cracking down on everybody, on everybody so. Yeah. Um, this strikes me as the kind of thing, it's like, you don't want necessarily want to ask if they've got one. It's like, oh, you don't. Oh, let's fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Some towns don't need one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it all depends on the, on the, on the watershed, so. Okay. Um, hopefully. Yeah. I'm sure you would have heard about it by now. I'm sure we mm -hmm. probably would have heard about it by now if we were <coughs> mandated to have one. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Good. So, any other questions for us? No. I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Gary fills you in on all the details. So. Okay. Um, now, typically the way that we handle this, just so that um, uh, you know, we would, um, we usually negotiate offline relative to like what would be in the specific offer letter and timing and what have you. Um, if we were to make an offer, what would be your likely availability date? Two weeks from the offer letter. I, I can't just walk out. I have to give a notice. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, if you said anything less than that, I would have probably <laughs> been like, you're not our guy, if, to be frank. So, um, but uh, do we want to vote tonight? Do, how, do you, how do you all want to handle it? Like I said, I brought references. If you want it, feel free to call yeah. these people if you'd like. Yeah, um, actually, I would, I would I, like to do that. I, I, I think I'd like to schedule a vote for this in two weeks, and that way we We've got some time. I think the situation is, the situation we have now is stable enough that we're not, need to feel so rushed. Okay. It's like I'm, I don't know that I will change my mind based on my impression now, but I always like to let, I always prefer to let it sit in the back of my head. Well that and I, and I, and the one thing I will not do ever in this town would be to advocate any, like if I was to make a proposal tonight, I would I would recommend higher pending reference check mm -hmm. and 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 appropriate um, and finding a mutually acceptable terms with the individual like that's what I like if you were if you were entertaining a motion mm -hmm. that it, it would have been a a to we go to the negotiate next step? go to the next step mm -hmm. inclusive of the references and determine if we can negotiate acceptable terms to then vote against those terms at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that would include the reference check because this town has been burned mm -hmm. multiple times by failing to do reference checks. So, yes, we should not make that, we should not repeat that mistake. Right. So, I guess my question would be, would you entertain a motion to, for us to do the reference checks and at least you know, pending the results of the reference checks, see if we can determine terms for the board to then decide yay or nay at the next I, meeting. 
And I yes. can come up with what that motion will be in fewer words. But, but yes, I'm, I'm, I, I, th I think that would be, I think that would be reasonable right. to, um, that, that would give the board members a chance to, to sort of think about it, right. come back next week, um, presuming the reference checks look good, right. and then we can then say, okay, if, if, we ha if we've converged on, on terms, mm -hmm. then it's like, it's just a matter of does, does, does everyone, do we have enough thumbs up? Right. And if we don't have enough thumbs up, then the terms don't matter. Okay. But I, I think that's a, that, that moves things forward without rushing them, in my okay. opinion, so I'm comfortable with that. So my question would be, does one of you want to do the reference checks, or do you want me to continue with the processing? Not it. I'm fine with it. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion that the board delegate authorization, authority to me to conduct the reference checks and to enter preliminary um, discussions regarding um, potentially mutually acceptable terms. That's the motion, I'll second. All right, um, I'm good with it. Any discussion? Seeing as there's none, uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank I'll you, Pete. this with you guys. All right. That's all my references. Mm -hmm. That's for you to. That's mine. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? All right. Great. Sorry, I tried to make it as short as possible, but, you know, mm -hmm. everything's complicated. Yes. All right. Agenda item number three, Apple Country Radio. Sharon. Tonight. I got a little bit of a cough, but otherwise I'm fine. So if okay. I <coughs> keep doing that, don't mind me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, let's see. Here we go. The Apple Country Radio contract. Is that Karen? No. Yeah, I, and I have it up. Okay. All right, now we've already executed the agreement for the antenna placement, so this is for the studio space. That's correct. Okay, and all the work has been done? Yes, okay. except for hooking up the internet cord, the uh, cable, to um, a node in the basement. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be done by Spectrum on my say-so. And that means that any internet use will not be accrued to the town. Mm -hmm. It will be under my control. And it will ensure the security of the broadcast transmitter and the emergency alert system mm -hmm. to make it hopefully unhackable. Because so yeah, so you're, you're putting in your own internet, your, your own connection. That's from correct, at our expense. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure exactly when that will happen. It will happen on the availability of um, Spectrum mm -hmm. and a couple of other things I have to line up. But if I can um, interrupt, I've got some documents for you folks. Because okay. I did not have the time. This is, I got the word late last night that the FCC has granted the construction permit for us to move. And it took a while because they had, they had our, uh, licensee name down incorrectly okay. and it took us over three months to get it corrected because government mm -hmm. <laughs> so <It's> government. <laughs> so this document shows the correct name it's basically a technical document yeah. it, it gives the parameters of the new antenna site and gives us 36 months to make the change if we're going to be, if the station is going to go dark longer than 10 days, I have to notify the FCC and they can give us an extension. But once everything's in place and we make the move, I don't expect that to happen. I expect it to go very quickly, depending on the availability of my broadcast engineer and um, the other personnel I'm going to need, the uh, antenna guy, the one who's actually going to make the move from Gavit and bring the, uh, the equipment here. 
and the broadcast engineer will hook the whole studio up. So it's going to depend on their availability. Ideally, I would schedule it to happen on the same day so I can have both of them here and uh, work together. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to give out was, um, did all of you get copies of my March 28th memo? That's the one with the logo on it? I will say no. Okay, I have an extra copy. No. I, which one was it? Karen, that was yeah, the one I Karen was waving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And finally, um, you're going to need this because we have not ascertained what we're going to be charged for rent. Mm -hmm. This is something that Kelly suggested in my talks with her. Yeah, I, I get that. Up. That's what I get up okay. already. <laughs> There's a, uh, there's a copy for each one of you. That's, right. They're not all for you, Tom. <laughs> I, but they said, they said they had their own electronics, right. so I wasn't going to hand out okay. the paper. This is updated cool. because it okay. depends on the latest electric bills. Mm -hmm. The one that you have is four months out of date. I have a okay. question about this. Sure. So um, these are all reflective of times that you're working in there? It, it, forgive me for the, some of this, mate. No, that's fine. You know, uh, <laughs> but I, so have you been still working in the Gavit? The station is still active. Right. Yeah, we are still broadcasting. Yeah. The active work in the building has stopped. Yeah. Because number one, we we ran into COVID and that right. threw a monkey wrench into things. But the with these electric bills, those bills are current. Just um, for the electricity that's being used that's being for the used, equipment correct. and stuff like that. Right. Not so much you being in there and doing anything yet. Well, it really doesn't right. make any difference. That That's the electric bill for the transmitter, yeah. for the emergency alert system, yeah. to power the internet modems. Yeah. It's to power any um, heat that we use. Yeah. Um, we have some electric heaters in the building. I use them sparingly for obvious reasons. And what is the square footage size of that currently? That building, is it I much larger than what it, you're I working? think it's close to 1,000 feet. Right, so you're heating 1,000 foot where Hopefully it, not the whole thing, but right. yes. Okay. And whereas this is more like, what are we talking? Maybe. Um, I talked 200? with the insurance company about the the insurance we're going to be required, and it comes to let's see, one thirty five plus, uh, roughly just a shade under three hundred square feet. Yeah. So. And Kelly had suggested that I. Um, I use the median, not the average, as a um, as a starting point, um, because the actual amount that the town would charge me for rent, according to the earlier talk that we had, would be based on replenishing what we use for heat for the town. In other words, um, for or rather electricity for the town, it would help to um, rather than put in a whole meter which we had to do at Gavit at our expense again it would um, we'd based on an estimate of the of the electricity we'd be using and I want to point out again the transmitter is only 100 watts mm -hmm. it's not one of these humongous things that you see with right, 100 with, watts is burning nothing yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh, that's two and a two and a half kilowatt hours a day not a lot The memo I sent you on March 28th, it's basically to bring you up to speed on what I've been doing in the meantime. Um, the part that's in italics um, talks about what I'd like to do at the point we're in now. Um, and I'll just read those for the benefit of people here. Um, Gavit, I'll try to summarize. Gavit is still in negotiations about when and how they're going to sell the building. They are only recently decided to talk to a commercial realtor. So they're not even at the point where they're ready to list the building yet. They want to find out what their options are. And Lisa Baker, the treasurer, has been in close contact with me, and she's been excellent to work with. Um, if I have a question for her, she gets an answer, and I try to reciprocate. Um, Scott Mansfield, as, I, as you mentioned, has finished the electricity and has pulled the LAN CAT6 cable for internet service and has completed all that work in both the green room and the mezzanine above it. So that's done. Um, I already mentioned how Spectrum would um, 
put in a, a separate internet node at our expense and to charge us separate from the town. Mm -hmm. um, number three we can skip because I already gave you the document. We've been granted um, the FCC application for minor modification. Um, Hampton Communications, I mentioned them, not by name, the, um, the antenna guy and our broadcast engineer. I'm trying to line those two up. And I'm also trying to find someone who'd be willing to donate the use of a bucket truck to get to the top of the clock tower. Mm -hmm. um, because based on our last experience, just renting one of those puppies will cost us anywhere from 2000 to 1500 uh, 1500 to $2,000. What's this for? It's to get the antenna to the top of the clock tower, which is 75 feet. Mm -hmm. And who would do this? Um, that's what I want to know. I'm no, trying to find someone. looking for a lead for a friendly vendor. Yes. Okay. Or someone. It's like, have you talked to uh, Bill Simpson Jr. of uh, Smokestack Lightning? No, I haven't. That may that they may be do they may do work with um, that. And uh, Dennis Tucker, our tree warden, probably knows some people with bucket trucks that might be willing to help out. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. I will follow up on that. You're welcome. Uh, you know, that's I don't do construction, so this is all new to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my only concern is that it's just the liability of someone doing it. No, th well, that's <laughs> well, true, but yeah. it, but th that would be an independent. Uh, and right. I mentioned two independent businesses doing work for Apple Country mm -hmm. Radio. It's like it's. It's not, it's not liability on the town. Well, not only that, if you go back to the antenna license, which was previously signed, it mentions that I have to prove that they're covered. Right. Mm -hmm. And submit documents to that effect to right. this body. So, um, you know, we won't have any amateurs working on the, on the clock tower. And I've been working uh, in communication with Al Jones, who's been up there numerous times to help fix the clock. And he's let me know exactly what they can expect to find up there. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had a licensed plumber meet with me on Wednesday of last week. Um, there are two ancient fixtures in the bathroom in the green room. They're not connected to anything. And I'd like to use that little room for storage, you know, shove a bookcase in there and keep things in there. And he's going to give me an estimate on what it would take to pull those fixtures and cap those pipes. There's no water running in. There's nothing running out. It's just empty pipes. The, the pipes, the fixtures have been decommissioned? Yes. Okay. And um, I would like a suggestion on where I should put the fixtures when they've been pulled, other than just leaving them in the I think that would be more appropriate probably for a town hall improvement committee. I could, I could yeah. ask them. Sure. That would be great. That's, that was my first thought also. Okay. And that's another reason to talk to Bill Simpson. Very good. Um, I'm also looking for quotes for um, floor guys to either clean the floors in those two spaces or um, if I can find the funds to refinish them. Again, at our expense. No help, cleaning's not my thing. <laughs> okay, you're off the so, hook, Tom. I don't, know about the, I don't know about the other two members. <laughs> And then finally, this is fairly important, um, given some of the issues that have happened in the town hall, um, I'd like to install locks, three locks, on all of the doors to those two rooms. Mm -hmm. um, one on the door to the ballroom, one on the door to the stage, and then finally a lock on the door to the mezzanine, which is up that little stairway. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to have upside of at least $25,000 worth of equipment there. Mm -hmm. And that's not counting the 45 boxes of CDs I've amassed. So um, I'd, like, I'd like to be able to lock the place up. Mm -hmm. that's even, yeah, even when I'm inside the room, I would like to be able to do that. That is, um, what, and that's what was the locations that you were looking to lock? If you go up to the second uh, yeah. floor and you look into the ballroom, the room on the left is right. the one that I'm going to be occupying. I, for some reason, I thought you said banquet hall. <laughs> I might have the ballroom, the, right. the room to the, to the left of the ballroom. There's yeah. a door leading directly into the ballroom, yeah. and there's one leading directly onto the stage, yeah. a short flight of steps up. And then if you take a left, there's a very steep, very right. narrow set of yeah. stairs to the mezzanine. And I would like to lock all those doors. Um, that, the, is, that, that is a reasonable request. The one thing is that the... Um, the, the town will need emergency access and also in case of um, emergency crews respond, um, keys would need to be available so that if they need to check for a fire, they don't have to knock your door down. Agreed. And, and, so, and in previous conversation we had, we would give keys to both the fire and the police departments labeled appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe the, uh, I know Al Jones was working on a, uh, what's called a Knox box, which would have 
keys to all the offices that would be accessible to emergency responders. Mm -hmm. And so that way, if they need, if they did need to respond, I mean, they have a key to the front door, but if Al's office is locked, this this box would hold the keys to the individual offices. And my my expectation is that we would include um, the off the keys to your space in there also, so that and these keys would be in a locked box, only accessible to police and fire. Uh huh. And so and so just if if that's if I'm remembering correctly, I understand it. Is that acceptable to you? That, that sounds reasonable. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, as again, it was fire and police, and um, I did promise um, Marty Hamish that I would get a fire extinguisher for the office as well. So mm -hmm. that's not anywhere in the documents, but you know, I just to, because he had concerns about that. I mm -hmm. believe he wanted me to install a sprinkler system, and I told him that really was <laughs> that was not going to work out. So. Um, so I'd like to find out what type of locks to get mm -hmm. and where this town has purchased them. And that would all, again, go to Town Hall Improvement. Okay. Bill's gonna get a very long memo from me. <laughs> um, I did mention- long memos, don't let him fool you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I did mention that due to the age and possible fragility of the plaster in those rooms, because this is an old building, I'm not gonna be driving any nails into it if I can help it. I'm going to use those 3M sticky things if mm -hmm. I have to put things on the wall. I'm not going to hang this, the uh, studio speakers on the wall. I will use stands or put them right on the desk. Mm -hmm. um, what would you be hanging on the wall? Just um, artwork or? Uh, well, I don't know about artwork. We or we would, because it's a plast they're plaster walls <coughs> and a hardwood floor, we're going to need to, to put up some, some sort of acoustical baffles. Right. And all they would be basically mm -hmm. picture styrofoam. frames with, with <laughs> styrofoam and or fabric. Okay. You know, fairly I've, lightweight. I've seen, yeah, I've seen, okay, yeah, acoustic baffles for the studio yeah. space. For, and again, if you yeah. wanted to talk to Bill Simpson, he has an entire studio with that type of uh, acoustic um, stuff in it. So I didn't know that, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm envious. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm in conversation with Hanover Insurance Group about the insurance coverage as um, in accordance with the terms of the antenna and the draft um, contract that we're talking about tonight. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I also found out when the improvements to the building were made because they wanted to know that. And uh, I've sent that information on the line. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a short list of, of relatively minor improvements. The most important one, I think, would be putting a handrail in the mezzanine stairwell because that's a code requirement. And Jeff Taylor told me what I'd need. So, and the rest are cosmetic, basically. And as I said, uh, in gratitude for the towns allowing us to use the space, um, our goal is to leave them better than we found them. Mm -hmm. If there are any other questions about that aspect of the contract, um, you know, I I'm, I'm, I'm welcome the board's suggestions for what we would be charged monthly. And um, also, I have some requests about the actual wording of the contract I'd like to put up for um, discussion. Okay. Consider it through me. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, I, I want to at least put a put down relative to the to the contract. I know we had originally roughed out at about 200. Um, Sharon, you were recommending the median, which was 153. Or rounding it off. Right. Yeah. My thought would be somewhere between the two, which would be like 175 a month. Because right. that way it gives us a little bit of buffer depending on... What and it's a service volatility is. to the town. And yeah. Well, not only that, electric residents. rates might go up. Yeah. So, yes, I, I would agree to that. Yeah. That works for me. Does it work for you? 
So what is the number you're suggesting, just so I can write it 175. down? 175. 175. And if we do the math, that times 12 is, what does that come out? 2,400, 2,100, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's do, let's do the math proper, though. Well, it's 25 times 12, so yeah, that's 300 less, so it would be $2,100 a year. What is the agreement say? Is it for annual? Uh, some of, uh, yeah, it's annual. Yeah. For the initial terminal license, which is, this was a one-year agreement? If that's how it was worded, yes. Is that what the discussion was going to be? Yes. <laughs> well, and then, but there's, it's in there as a one year, but that it may extend a term for consecutive periods of one year thereafter mm -hmm. by giving the town a written notice of 30 days prior to the expiration of the initial term. I think we, I think we could. What was your what was your proposal going to be in lieu of that? Well, um, given our substantial effort so far and to come in cash and and uh, effort, you know, over six grand to date and counting, wow. um, and given that standard municipal leases are normally allowable for terms up to three years, um, I would like to change the one year and consecutive one years to a three-year um, agreement, which is what I, I currently have now, I believe, with Gavit. Okay. Um, so three-year with three-year renewal or three-year with one-year renewal? Three-year with three-year renewal. I have um, the other suggestion I have, the other request I have is that the two licenses with whatever we agree on be put in sync because as it is now, um, As it is now, though, the uh, draft agreement would expire in 2025, and the antenna agreement would expire in 2024. And I think it would make more sense for them to be concurrent. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this should go to 2025. You're, you'd be okay with a two-year because it would take you to the end of the license. I, I prefer a three-year, but, you know, I... My chief objection is to have a one year by one year because, um, well, I already mentioned that, that uh, municipal leases are allowable up to three years right. and that the initial letter that Tom signed talked about negotiating a three year agreement. Okay. I have a copy of that letter in case you need to see it. But So that was my understanding originally. Um, I did talk to Kelly about this. She said, well, anything in that is negotiable, and you need to bring it up, so I have. And, of course, the terms of both of these uh, licenses allow for notice to be given on both sides. And then there's a, a final change I'd like to make um, on the wording of the draft agreement, um, where it says, under number 20, termination, uh, it reads currently now, the town shall have the right to terminate this license for no reason whatsoever without recourse. I am definitely not comfortable with that. I would like to, inc to change the wording to whatever version of the following is acceptable, which is licensee breach of contract or emergency need of the space. And my concern also is that this board goes through changes, and I'd like some stability. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, I picked that up. That's, yeah. That's. <laughs> I don't think that's an unreasonable request. Um, my thinking is that let's see, license licensee breach of contract for the emergency need of space. The one thing, though, if we extend if we extend this to three years, then the the amount we're getting paid for power is locked in for that time. I hadn't and considered so, that. And so I would think that a, 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 in exchange for that, a, the, op, the option to adjust that based on change in power, uh, proportionate to change in power prices would protect the town's interest so that we're not 
losing money on the uh, on the electricity. That's that's one concern yeah. of a longer contract. Yeah. So I think I think what we could I, I think what we could probably do um, would be do the initial term be a three year term, but have the license fee be defined that year one would be at the rate that we discussed, okay, and that um, year two and three would be, um, I think what we can do is find out what our base rates are, like per kilowatt hour for electrical usage, and that in the following years it would be adjusted based off of like a 12 month look back. Mm -hmm. Like if we do a 12 month look back of our actual rate, like our, our cost per kilowatt hour, right? Yes, with, without credits. Without credits, just the kilowatt hour mm -hmm. cost, right? And then as part of the annual, like at, at the anniversary of the contract, do a 12 month look back and whatever like percentage change has occurred in the electric bill would be the percentage change of the fee. Works for me. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. So theoretically, it's like, it could go up or down. Mm -hmm. It could go up or down, right? right. If, it, if, if yeah. electricity goes down. My money's on up. <laughs> well, there have been some years that if you look at 12-month rolling, oh, yeah. no, it, that it, 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 it has it, actually come down. It, it has, but my money's on up. My money is on up. but um, so, so the language would be, so shall pay for the initial one-year period instead of initial term. Um, uh, follow on um, license fees shall be calculated with an escalation from base per any change in 12 month rolling kilowatt hour uh, cost. Does that sound like the appropriate terms? Are we look? Are we doing a backwards looking? Or are we doing a forward looking? Back, you can't look forward. I don't have but, a crystal ball. But so you, like, but, so but, right now, wait, 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 wait. Let, let me, let me just, let me just give you my ahead. logic and then you can ask your question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now we're looking back roughly 20, well, 13 months, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking back 13 months right now and we're basing the fee based off of the last 13 months mm -hmm. and, and slightly above the median rate. So then we're going to get to basically 12 months from now and look back at the last 12 or 13 months. Right. Look at the median. Look, look at it in the median rate in terms of kilowatt hour, cost per kilowatt hour because we don't mm -hmm. know what we don't really know what portion of them of this building's electricity it is. Right. right? No meter. So There's, there wouldn't be a separate meter. So instead of looking at the actual cost like we are here, mm -hmm. we would be looking at the kilowatt hours rate and then adjusting that $175 by whatever the change in rate is for the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how it would work. So that would give you your scaler. Right. I, I guess what I, what I had in mind was that uh, we would pick an anniversary date and, and say basically the change in rate between, let's say, the date the contract is signed and the one year anniversary, as an example. We look at how much the powers, how much we're paying for power on that anniversary date, and use that as the scaling factor, rather than looking back. Because no, because there's so much seasonal change in cost of kilowatt hours. If it's the wrong month of the year, we'd either be taking her for a ride or getting take, took for a ride. And you don't know, and like the differences each month, like the percentage difference each month like the rates it's not that every march it changes mm -hmm. it's it's the power market it's people's usage there's mm -hmm. so many differences and there are so many potential drivers oh, that i think if you pick that snapshot in time month yeah. you i don't pick think wrong it, time? you could pick the wrong okay. month it's possible either it's for like, her or for us one of us could wind up really hosed it's like i it's like 
my power bill, I told them, send me the same bill every month so I can tell the bank. To nodding your head. I know we're not supposed okay. to take comments, but okay. the nonverbals indicate that okay. I might not be wrong. It's like, it's like <laughs> I just tell the power company, send me the same bill every month, and I'll have the bank send you the same amount every month, and then I don't have to open my power bill on time. Mm. So I don't see that variation. It just, yeah. yep. the same amount goes to the bank. Yep. Okay, I, I, think, I think we're good, I think we're good enough. Okay. Okay, and then then the last one we would need to either come up with verbiage or or get town council to come up with verbiage is something a little bit less uh, toxic and noxious than the uh, termination that's currently in there. <laughs> I'm I'm willing to wait. I've got plenty to do in the meantime. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, I think I'd like to re that one. I'd like to revisit with like genuine legal counsel because mm -hmm. I don't know what's. Allowable. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's allowable. I, I, I'm willing to play with fees because I mean, at that, right. I mean that's that's really yeah. truly up to us, right? right? Um, but I want to make sure that we have the the right language in that. Um, I, I think I think something like you know, the the opposite of won't be unreasonably withheld would be the the won't be unreasonably terminated mm -hmm. type language, but. I need to. We need to ask them what's the, what's the right language for for mm -hmm. that. Where it's it's kind of like a, uh, it has to at least, you know, pass the sniff and reasonable person check, and we could even, you know, see what they think of the language that Sharon's proposing. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. I, you know, I, I. The only lease I've negotiated has was with Gavitt, and they're a private enterprise, not a municipal entity. Yeah. So. Uh, but I think we take that back to KP and come up with something that's a little mm -hmm. less. So, something that benefits from their experience in the legal world and they say, yeah, when the lawyer, contract lawyers come in, this is the language that's going to get you what you tried to, what you wanted in the first place. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, as far as the, uh, the rates go, did you want to leave that up to the next discussion or do you want to nail that down now? I, I'm, you know, allowing for the words, the verbiage that you were yeah. going to have them look at. Yeah, I mean, we could. I mean, we could send that over with the question on the termination clause. Mm -hmm. If they have some recommendation of a better way to phrase it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. going to suggest that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they can clean it up and make it something pretty. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's That's the one issue thing of. Let the attorneys. <laughs> and then there's the issue of making the two licenses concurrent, mm -hmm. so that there is unanimity between. The room upstairs and the room downstairs. I, I think we could do that by entering into a, a, a agreeing with um, Apple Country Radio to renegotiate the um, the term of the uh, antenna placement, with the intention of making it concurrent with the studio space. I've actually I, suggested wording on this document that you have in front of you. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I treated it like the way that I do when I'm writing. Um, <laughs> bylaws. Okay. But, uh, okay, and, oh, okay, it says to the signed lease agreement. Right. And then, and that's. I tried to make it as clear as possible, but. Okay, so, but, you know. so this, this, this would be a detail of how we would, it's like in the framework of agreeing to amend the antenna agreement that this, yeah. this is, this yeah, is, this is, this is the type of change that you're, that you're, that you are contemplating or, or considering in that in that modification, right? With the board's agreement, of course, which okay. is why I, I laid it out in a memo for you. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, I mean, so I, I think that uh, th that's not on the agenda, but I think that we can uh, can take that up. It's proximate enough to this that I think we can discuss it. I think that's something again. We could send it over to KP for the express language for the amendment. Yeah, I, th I think I think we can, I think we can agree to uh, in principle and. Uh, discuss and formally adopted at a future meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm amenable to that. I, I didn't expect anything final tonight, given what I've asked for. So mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I, I think I think it's prudent to align the contracts. Mm -hmm. I would agree in principle. So mm -hmm. I think it's worth getting the language in front of us to vote on. Mm -hmm. So all right. So we need to send this to KP. With so I'm going to make a motion that we send. Um, the, pro the proposed revisions to KP, along with their a request for them to provide input on what's appropriate language for what was that twenty um, to make it a little less capricious. Yes, and uh, the uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we'll and you don't need to use the make it a little less capricious in emotion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the meantime, I think by the next time we meet, I will have insurance documents for you. Great. Okay. Let's see. We will be dis at our next meeting. We will be discussing um, the budget with the advisory committee. So I'm not sure how much we may not be able to take you until the beginning, the first meeting in May. That's fine. That I have plenty is, to do in the meantime. Okay. I, I just want I wanted to let Setting you know. And if you said no, 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 I need to get this done. I wanted that out now. Sure. And so if and since it's not, then we'll we'll plan and that'll give everyone plenty of time. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't expect, you know, what Lisa Baker keeps telling me every time I bring up the deadline for the sale of the building is we're not going to put you out on the street. Mm -hmm. Those are her exact words. Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about that from that standpoint. But I do plan to keep um, you folks informed of what's going on at that end, too, just so mm -hmm. that you're fully informed of the whole situation. Is there anything else I can do for you folks or any other questions I can ask while I'm here? Okay. I, I can answer, rather. I don't think so. I think, I think we've. What's that? I'm good. All right. I think we've identified all the open points, and we know what we need to resolve for the next time we meet. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Tom, I'm going to make a motion that we do take the next item out of order and uh, do the treasurer next. Um, I will happily accept that motion. Second. All right. All in favor of taking the item agenda out of order and going to number five, uh, in, or uh, per the chair's discretion, please say aye. Can aye. I? Can I? Well, I tell you what, my original motion was just that we take some items out of order. Okay. And so I'll, let me let me just complete that with that. per the chair's discretion for the right. balance of the meeting. Right. Thank you. Second. All right. All in favor of uh, taking <coughs> items out of order, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Sharon, so we're going to agenda, we are going to agenda item number five, interim treasurer. We will be uh, coming back to number four later. Yep. I thought we'd have time to squeeze it in. Yeah. I'm, I'm always so I'm always so, so like, optimistic. Like Elon Musk, your your timelines are aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very polite way of saying you can't manage a schedule. <laughs> and you're not arguing. <laughs> That's a quote. I was going to say it's just a quote regarding Elon Musk, but the person who tends to use it with me is not good at managing a schedule. So, okay. Hey Sharon, thank you for coming. Hi. Thanks for having me. All right. So, we know, um, we know, I'm taking, I need a, I'm needing a moment to pivot. Okay. <laughs> so, we are in need of a treasurer, and you are currently serving as treasurer in Holland. That's correct. All right. And you, uh, and you have the, you have the bandwidth, to, you think you have the bandwidth to help us? I do. Excellent. Um, how long have you been? Why don't you tell us something about yourself? Give me a moment okay. to stop talking. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, so I've been um, treasurer in Holland for two years. Mm -hmm. I've been working in the treasurer department for 10 years, and I am a certified uh, municipal treasurer. I'm familiar with VADAR. I'm familiar with Harper's. I'm familiar with healthcare open enrollment, which will be coming up on your, um, coming up pretty quickly. Fantastic. <laughs> no, you would ask. You deal with our lovely regional school. I do. Yeah, and Harper's is the system we use here for our payroll, it is. right? Mm -hmm. All right. right. Excellent. I, that's what I thought. But I wanted to make sure. Yes. And then in uh, in Holland, it's a one person department. Uh, I have a uh, an assistant. She works six hours a week. Okay. That's new. Okay. And that's uh, to provide additional coverage when you're not in the office or? Correct. And also, I'm an advocate for assistance. I feel like it's just a safety net for the town. If something mm -hmm. happens to your treasurer, then you have somebody that can step in, okay. case in point. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, <laughs> we're, we're a counterexample of that. Mm -hmm. All right. And then are you? So, and Tom, I just want to. I want to do want to clarify something. Yeah. I don't believe we've had our treasurer position posted long enough to have this be a discussion about it, the permanent posting. But I think we are in a position to authorize an interim treasurer. Even if somebody wanted to give us a hard time about it not being posted long enough, I would consider this an emergency situation. We got to keep the lights on. Um, so I think we're well within our purview if we choose to um, appoint 
an interim today that I, I think we're well within our rights to do so. Um, uh, yes, I, I believe we are, my understanding is we're within our rights to appoint an interim um, regardless of the uh, status of the posting. And, I, and I for this position, so. given, given the importance of uh, keeping right. our place I, I just, I just want to I just want to put that on the table. Okay. I think, yeah. I, is that, look, let's acknowledge that typically even with an interim for other positions, it's usual and customary to still have it posted for the two weeks before you would go ahead and appoint. Mm-hmm. But oh, that we post the interim position. Even that we post the interim position. Mm -hmm. okay. I think given the criticality of the role and the fact that the, we really don't have a, 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 a clear path by which to make sure everybody gets paid, including mm -hmm. our vendors and our employees, mm -hmm. that I, I think we are in a position that, that if we choose to do so tonight that we can appoint an interim treasurer. Um, I, I agree and... But the, but the letters the letters that's before us also expresses some interest potentially in the position longer term. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure we delineate the two. Okay, yes, that, 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 the, um, that the, today's discussion is strictly in the strictly context of an, in, of an in, holding position in an interim basis. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Beth. So, awesome. I know. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. No, I've I've done my research on. Yeah. Checks so all honestly, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you came. <laughs> I was going to say I. I've talked with some other towns, <laughs> had some good reviews. I talked to Sarah Hunter, who was the um, our prior outsource prior treasurer, outsource, good reviews, who had yeah. a lot of good things to say. So yeah, I don't want to. I don't, I don't, don't want to shortchange him, but it's by, by by appearing uninterested. But yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna say it, it, it's like, and it, it's it's not like I know the really good questions to ask. Like, right. what what form do you use for filling out this? It's just like the yeah, people no. that I know and trust <laughs> say you're good. Well, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, so my only question, I do have a couple of questions, okay. but it's more from a presumption of more working, understanding mm. like what it what it's going to look like for both communities, mm. right? Is is you are currently doing that work for Holland. Um, what kind of bandwidth does that leave you to also serve as our interim treasurer? Um, I'm in a really great spot in Holland, so I feel confident that I can help here. And I feel the yeah. main things that you're looking for are payroll, AP checks, and open enrollment for your health care. Um, anything beyond that, obviously, um, we can talk more about, and I'd be happy to help you with that, but I think coming out the door, what you're looking for is someone to help you with those main things. Okay. And, and things are up to I date here, they're that. up to date there. Yeah. She's got 24 hours there. Yep. So at least, at least yeah. some time for us. Right. So. My hours are flexible there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, uh, okay, cool. Do you have any concerns relative to the role? at least in an interim status with that kind of like limited scope? Uh, I spoke with Tom briefly about this. Excuse me for calling no. you Tom. <laughs> no, I, no, uh, I, Tom. I spoke with the chair. Um, and I do think it's important, whether it's me or someone else, that um, the, the letters for the banks and things like that always take longer than you think they will. They take um, way longer yeah. than you think they will. And bonds, um, all these things that will be really important um, for signing on and, and being able to fund the payroll. Um, so I just think that paperwork probably should get prepared sooner rather than later. Um, so it's not really a concern, but certainly a, um, lots of exclamation points around it. Yeah. The, if we weren't going to do do this, if we weren't going to decide on you tonight, we need to figure it out before Monday for whoever it's going to be <laughs> to start all the paperwork mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at a minimum. And even then, it's going to be mighty tight. Mm -hmm. So, so I'll make a motion that we Appointment. appoint. Uh, Sharon Ashley is our interim treasurer. Um, second. Is that a second? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dog person. Mm -hmm. I'll second. All right. And so I guess, um, all right, uh, just for discussion, it's um, we should the probably, right. I know we have a, a certain amount of work, it's, and so the question becomes, how much time do you think you would need to do the work? and? Mm -hmm we would want to make sure that we understand what times she could be here on a schedule. 
uh, so that the other departments need to turn over and, uh, and a regular schedule in order to ensure the, uh, smooth coordination. So I don't think she would technically really need to be here all that much if we were to change the treasurer to change to a different collector for turnover. So, or we just set a time for collector. So I so I think I think that that's something. I don't know that we need to set that tonight, though. I think we do need to understand what the cadence is relative to like when payroll is turned in, when, mm -hmm. when, when Harper's is gonna have mm -hmm. to get run. I, I think that's some, I think we can talk about that, outs, have one of us talk about that outside the meeting and then just make sure it gets properly we have, communicated. Well, because we have to have the, reason, the, the reason I bring it up is I, I, I wanna make sure expectations are aligned between us as a board and with Sharon. It's like, right. cause if we're envisioning or if, if, if we agree to she's going to be here four hours a week, and then the department say, no, it's like I can't wait until Thursday yeah, afternoon. Well, and, well, and, and, and that's hypothetical. So, so let's ask Sharon, what, mm -hmm. what, for the three things that you called out, mm -hmm. what, what amount of time on site do you feel you would need, and what's the likely structure that it would take? Um, that's a great question. I think it would probably, I would probably need to do your payroll a time or two to really get an understanding. I think I could probably do your payroll and before lunchtime, so a few hours, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you need an extra time because you can't find that penny. Um, so I would say I could come in most afternoons um, your Monday through Thursdays, that's correct? Your correct. Time, yeah. Yes, the town hall's open four days a week. So, well, uh, yeah. people do work on Fridays. The town hall itself is it's not closed. closed. The town to the hall public. is closed, but there, there are people that do come in on Friday because, and I think the treasurer was one of them because I think people like turn in their payroll paperwork on like Thursday. Can I just speak to what our current schedule is? Um, uh, Lori, if you could give us some technical information of how town hall works, that would help the board make a decision. So currently, payroll is received to me on thir every other Thursday. So next Thursday, I receive the payroll. I scan it to the treasurer by two o'clock. It's entered by the treasurer either Thursday afternoon or Friday morning, and then she and I balance together. And then the next time that someone would need to be on site would be that following Tuesday, so just two days ago, to actually cut the payroll checks. Okay. So those would be like absolutely yeah. on site. Yeah. So it would be days. Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, following. Friday morning. Although a lot of that work can be done remotely in Harper's. It, oh, it can all be done remote because I'm physically the one collecting all the sheets and uh -huh. scanning them all to the treasurer. Okay. Um, and then you'd have to be on site at some point on Tuesday. Tuesday to cut the checks. To cut the checks. Usually after, I, I normally tell whoever signed the warrant to come after 12. Yeah. Okay. So. So, so that's how minimum payroll would get covered. Mm -hmm. And then what about turnovers, for example, when the, uh, when the water department has a billing cycle? So I think if she's talking about the fact that she's good with afternoons, it sounds like it, it, sounds like it would work to do um, some level of hours. Is that Monday through Thursday you could do an afternoon time on site? I could, yes. I, I should probably say or I would could. would Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday be better? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons. Yeah. That would be good, and then I can, uh, yes, that would work. Yeah. So, because Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons on site would allow for the mm -hmm. department turnovers, yep. and it's very predictable, and it also already has her here for the, when the payroll is really kicking off. Exactly. She's here, she's here on Thursday when Lori has the payslips, and on the Thursdays when the payslips come in, and then the fall, and on the Tuesdays when checks are cashed, or not cashed, cut. cut. It's like, she mm -hmm. would be in the office to take care of that also. And so the, that would align with her on-site schedule, which, yeah. makes which makes sense to me. Yeah, and then that way it's nice and predictable. Mm -hmm. Lori, do you, they submit on Monday to Harper's? We usually try to submit either Thursday afternoon or Friday, as soon as it's done. Okay. It's for a Wednesday, I think. Uh, okay, same, same as us. Okay. Us. So Monday's drop dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that, so the what we're discussing st is still good for you, uh, more based on what Lori, the information Lori gave you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So, any 
other questions or concerns? I don't right now because I don't know okay. anything about the office, but I'm open to having more discussions as we go along. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoon should should put us in a At good least spot. Keep the lights on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I, I do have a question, and and um, Holly's not going to be here today. I did have a conversation with her. She had no interest in interim treasurer or applying for the treasurer role. Mm -hmm. Okay. She did have interest in re-engaging, potentially supporting the role in like an assistant treasurer capacity, citing that the issues that we previously had with the with the turnover could be handled by having all the cash from the water department coming through the, the town collector. Um, so I don't know if that's something we want to entertain or not, but she did express an interest. So if you needed the hours support um, or wanted the hours support to have somebody else, you know, able to get bonded and represent, you know, the treasurer mm -hmm. office, I think we can work through the details and, and I, I do want to have some clear and candid discussions about concerns from the past and make sure that, that um, if that hasn't been cleared up, just set some very clear expectations. Just keep in mind, it's not just the water department, it would also be the police department. Okay. So someone would be collecting everybody else's money. Right. Okay. Okay, so somebody else would, yeah, so, so it would all have to go through right. the town collector. Okay. Right. So per Mass General Law, she literally couldn't touch any of the funds. Any of it. Okay. She can't prepare the form. She can't touch any of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And she understood that when I talked to her. So she understood that segregation, mm -hmm. even though we, we had previously had that bad practice. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, at the time, <coughs> at, the, at the time, our tax collector was solely a tax collector, right. and now our collector is a general collector. Yes. So that puts us in a better position to allow that, that support without stepping on that particular aspect of Mass General Law. Right. So um, I don't know that we need to decide that tonight, but if I, I think we may want to consider doing that just to start to grow up a bench again mm -hmm. associated with, with the role. So yeah. um, I don't know how you feel about it or if you prefer to get into the interim role first and have some discussions with Holly and see if that's a direction you want to go? I think I would like to have get, some input into that. I'd like to get in there first and then see how that... Yeah. For an emergency basis, we do have a bonded assistant treasurer collector. Oh. Whether everyone knows that or not, we are paying a bond for an assistant treasurer collector. We have been so? for over a year. Linda's bonded. Lindsay oh, Lindsay Rockwood is. Lindsay Rockwell is bonded. Yes, we bonded her for the position of assistant treasurer collector a year ago. Why do I not remember that? We did it originally to cover for Brenda while she was gone. And then we added the treasurer when we added the added back the assistant treasurer position. So we just added that name to her bond. Got it. So okay. we do, on paper, have someone that is bonded. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have somebody who's bonded, just not necessarily just not trained doing, and doing the work. She's trained to sit in uh, the collector's office, okay. but not never, the treasurer. Never sat in the treasurer's office. Got it. But okay. on paper is bonded for it. Okay, mm -hmm. great. That's good to know. That's a good piece of information. So. And what about rate details to a pay rate? We don't discuss that. We 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 absolutely can and do because we're going to. I mean. I haven't done zero homework on that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the position is, I would say, has a pay rate of $40 an hour. So I believe it's an $80,000 a year position for the treasurer yeah. based on our budget. Am I remembering the budget amount for the treasurer correctly, Beth? Yeah, you are. Okay. Because I looked at it. I know it's. I looked at it. I, it's in that. It's a. It's in yeah. that range. I, 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 I looked at it when we had the discussion on Monday. But I also know so. she doesn't work forty hours. She's like thirty-six or something like that. Or no, she's salary. So. Yeah. So. 
Um, what range were you expecting in terms of rate? Um, I actually hadn't thought, of it, <laughs> thought too much about it, no. So. so 40 would be acceptable. Okay. That would work for me. That would work for me. If you guys are good with it, I'll go. Yeah. So. Right. So I'm, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a motion that we appoint uh, Sharon Ashley as interim treasurer at a rate of forty dollars an hour. With the, um, yeah, actually just at forty dollars an hour with an expectation of, of three days a week on site. Do we? Oh, second. Oh, second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, for discussion, do we want to, um, uh, Sharon, how many, uh, with, the, with the understanding that you would be here, I would say 12 hours a week, um, how many total hours a week do you expect to need to, uh, to, to take care of these things? I just, it's like, it's just. Well, she's well, not going to probably really know until. So she's not going to know until she gets into yeah. it, one, and two, some of the work can actually be done off site. And, no, I, and I, I understand. That's, that's why I asked her how many hours she needs, because if she needs more hours than 12, but it's like, all right, then. So I think just, we're setting the expectation of three days on site. Mm -hmm. The position is funded to be up to 40 hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, the interim treasurer, I don't think we need to cap the number of hours because I think it, it, it depends on the work that needs okay. to get completed. Yep. She's then, outlined the three minimal areas that she'll ensure gets covered. I noticed that we didn't talk about reconciling between the departments, which, which you know, depending on how long we're in this, in this uh, position, that may become, that may or may not become an issue or she may or may not have to free up some more hours depending on, on what yeah. starts to happen in, in terms yeah. of a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we need to set the exact work. I think we've set enough work schedule for predictability for the departments, but I don't think we need to dictate the number of hours. Okay. I, I was more just thinking the a, 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 a limit without being too tight, uh, but that does, that does raise a question. Um, is there any specific work that a treasurer typically does that you see as explicitly excluded? Because you, you, you mentioned three things, payroll, AP, and open enrollment. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't feel familiar enough with everything that a treasurer does to understand what you may be excluding by not, in, by not listing it as in there. And so help me understand, it's like, like when we had Sarah Hunter in here on contract, mm -hmm. HR was explicitly excluded mm -hmm. from the work she did for us. So I'm expecting HR is something that you're, it, it's, excluding or is that something that you're going to help us with i can it's help you with that i was okay. just naming the things that i feel are top okay. top tier yeah. but uh, um a good point has been brought up i mean and we'll certainly reconcile with departments i'll mm -hmm. reconcile with the accountant you know at month end mm -hmm. um my understanding is march needs to be reconciled if if that needs to happen and when i'm here you know mm -hmm. that's um that's part of the job okay. um yeah. what are some things that we're not talking about tax title i mean mm -hmm. that's sort of um, if you have, if you have time, and we just got done with a bunch of, we but just we do got have done stuff in process. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Sure. If, if, so things that like something? that, can I do? Yes, I can okay. do those. Yeah. Um, and that you and you do it for us also as. as sure, as I can do okay. that if needed. Okay. I just, I just, I just want to make sure that, it, that there's nothing that the treasurer's office would do that we wouldn't, we, she wouldn't be doing for us. And it sounds like we don't have a problem here, so I'm good. I think those are good questions, and I'm glad you're bringing them up. So I'm not excluding anything. I'm just naming the things that I feel are right. most important right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else have anything else for discussion or further questions for Sharon? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of appointing Sharon Ashley as interim treasurer for the town of Brookfield, um, at, for the uh, as as we have discussed, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. I, yeah, I, but I do have a question about um, the amount of hours she works or full time. That this because this is interim, it doesn't become benefited or anything. Okay. So unless she was consistently working over nineteen hours, it's not a benefited position. That's correct. Right. Okay. So. That's the only last minute thing I thought of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, and I think that's just, I, I think the one thing I would ask is if it looked like you were gonna be working consistently over 19 hours to let us know so we can at least officially decide to do that. Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much, Sharon. Sure. Thank um, you. Well, Thank you. We, um, let's see, do you, um, I'm, uh, let's see. We should let Amy know that we have appointed, uh, I'm sorry. We have appointed her interim, but Amy hasn't left. So could I get a, could I get a motion to um, clarify that that appointment is effective as of April 11th on Amy's last day, just so that we don't have conflict? No, I'm sorry. no, no. you can't. You can't, can't because we've got to bond her as the yeah. treasurer. Yeah. So she has to actually have an appointment as our interim treasurer, even though there's an overlap. There's no problem with one person being the yeah. treasurer and another person being interim treasurer. And I don't think we want okay. her to and start and after Amy and leaves. And, 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 they need nice. to be, and they need to be able to do a handoff. And that's, that's, that's Good part point. of the whole. Uh, I, uh, Lori, yes. You're going to need an official appointment, uh, interim appointment letter for Sharon to have because our banks require that. Yeah. Right. So it's going to need to be dated for today. And that's why you need the overlap. Okay. Because Amy is going to have to give Sharon all of the bank access and Sharon's going to have to oh. go over to the bank and get and, all these. And, and, and if the appointment were later. effective yeah. later, get, she couldn't get the Monday. access. Yes. Okay. Like, like um, literally, we, we need that. Okay. Yep. Karen? I've done that in the past. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Karen, can you work with Amy on getting those letters yeah. um, done and then and, um, and call I, me? And I need to come over and sign it probably. Oh, because yes, you're the clerk? Yeah. So um, the good news is, is I was planning on playing hooky from work on Monday anyway for other reasons. But mm -hmm. I have to have that letter written. It has to be available for me prior to 8 2 30. What? On what day? On Monday. I need the appointment oh, document ready before 8 a.m. on Monday because I have to leave town at 8. Which means, does Mike have any role in that? No. She well, can I can it sign, sign it. it. I can, she can print it. I yeah. sign it. Then Mike can swear in. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But I think and this, she's talking about an appointment letter that we have to write to the bank stating that she was no, appointed. No, it doesn't have to be just a, just a standard appointment letter. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. The she, just, she, she just needs some. Yeah, yeah, she needs the letter saying the select board has appointed yeah. her. Yes. And then the banks will then that's something the banks will say. Oh, okay. Yeah. She has been appointed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and that make it up, so one more check off it for the bank. Mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Go, yeah. Let's mm -hmm. let's actually do that. If you don't mind, we're gonna. Actually, if you have your ID, he's a uh, notary public. You, you don't have your stamp with you, though, do you? I do not have a stamp with me. Okay. I'm going to start asking you to carry it to the meeting. Oh, you have a stamp. <laughs> okay. I'm going to bring my journal, you know. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so Sharon's going to write the letter? She, yeah, she's, Karen's going to write the letter. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so... So if you don't mind a, yes. staying long no, enough to fine. sign that. You don't have to stay up here. Okay. But, but we'll, we'll get that. We'll just kind of pass it around the room while we're doing other business. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Sure. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. All right. So we got that applied. And so um, given how much we have on the agenda and uh, do, we, uh, do we want to pass over the uh, interim assistant treasurer and save yeah. that for another day? Yep, All right. save it for another day. All right. I'll take a motion. Motion to pass over. Six. Second. All right. All in favor of passing over uh, agenda item number six, please say aye. 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 All right. And let's see. It's uh, not 8.15 yet. So paramedic um, group four retirement. Are we so passing over number, number seven? Four? No, we're jumping back to number four so I can so we can go, go back gotcha. to go doing although, things in although order. Although I think we will be passing over right, right. number seven, but we can talk a little bit about it. Tom, I get a point of order if I may. Um, a point of order. Yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead. Point of order. All right. I just want to give you this. Don't want to interrupt your meeting. Right. A you point. Of sign that for me on the other side. Okay. Mr. Holcraft, this is not a point of order, and I consider this an abuse of the attempt for point of order. I will sign this for you, but. Okay. Well, no, sorry, yeah, and you will, you will, I will not recognize you again since you're pulling a trick like this. No. The point of order is about the conduct of the meeting. I don't this know. document has nothing about the conduct of this meeting. Mm -hmm. You are abusing the process, no, and you are on notice. Thank you. Opinion. I was trying to be polite. 
I appreciate your politeness, but do not abuse the opinion. Now, moving on to paramedic group four. Thank you, Tom. And I, I'll be honest, I did not get a chance to read up on this. We're still working on getting our documents all in one place. What do we, there's no signature. There's no place for signature. So, so let's see. It's like, does, who's, who asked for this to be on the agenda? Was this from Kelly? Um, it, it was. Just says, so, yeah, just well, Chief packed. Martell actually, it originated with Chief Martell. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you take a look at the original note, okay. Do you want to type up here? Yeah. Peter, do you I, want to come I on did, up? I did forward. <laughs> you did <hit> forward. <laughs> <laughs> So, <clears throat> so I think what we probably do want to do, or my recommendation would be since I know, all I know about Worcester County retirement is that if we pay him the first month of the year, we get a discount on. I think it's the first five days <laughs> or of something, the year. whatever it, it is. They need that check early. Yeah, so long as we pay him early and we get a discount. That's about all I know about Worcester County retirement. <laughs> they tell us how much to pay and they say you get a discount, you pay early. And I don't like, I, I genuinely don't like making votes without understanding the facts. So um, I, I'd like to table, I mean, I'd like to basically table this but with the expectation that we'll ask for probably some assistance from either the treasurer or the town accountant to figure out what this uh, yeah, to understand what, what this, this means, means. <laughs> yeah it, it, that, that's I, that's exactly I'm, I'm looking going what does this mean I'm not comfortable voting on this so uh, yeah all right so, so I'm, I'm good with that take a motion to yeah so uh, I'll make a motion to kind of refer this to our financial team Mm -hmm. and then revisit it at the next uh, appropriate select board meeting. Thank you. Probably be in, a, in four weeks. Yeah. All right. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor of uh, asking the financial people what they think of this, uh, uh, of Beth's motion, uh, please say aye. 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 All right. And let's see. I can't seem to keep my agenda in the right place to save my life tonight. All right. Beth, um, what are we okay. doing with Sun Fusion? I'm going to make the recommendation to pass over because um, I, I got into a little bit of tilt the world between myself and KP Law, so mm -hmm. um, I need a, a little bit more time. So let's put it on the agenda for two weeks hence, if um, we can. Or we, we've got the uh, we've got the joint meeting with. We've, the, we've got the joint meeting with advisory. We can probably uh, we can probably squeeze it in as on a. I can try and squeeze it in on a limited basis, but it's just with advisory. There's gonna, that's going to be a long meeting, and I don't want to get too let's, much in. Let's try to lead, put it two weeks hence. Okay. I think, I think we'll have it 
hammered out by then. But, okay. But um, I mean, and, and Nicole if it was closed, out of office for a bit, and it caused some confusion, and mm -hmm. so I'm trying to rectify the confusion and making sure that we we okay. dotted all our I's and crossed our T's. Yeah, and if it's consistent with the HCA we already assigned, then I think yeah. a lot of discussion that will have already been had. Right. Okay. So. All right. So I'll take that motion. And I apologize. So I uh, motion to pass over. Second. Second. All right. All in favor of passing over agenda item number seven, please say aye. 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 All right, uh, agenda item number eight, Chief Procurement Officer. Um, uh, we had designated Kelly our Chief Procurement Officer and uh, Kelly is moving on to greener pastures and so the thought is we should, uh, we should designate a, uh, a, a successor in that role. And from, uh, it's like, and I believe uh, Karen has talked to uh, Lindsay, who has um, expressed a, uh, a willingness to serve in that role. And Lindsay yeah, she has. has the she has the certification. Yeah. And mine ran out because mm -hmm. Kelly took all this up. She's going. To, she offered to um, be the interim, um, well, procurement officer, basically, and until we can get, until we can hire a TA or a grant writer, what is going to have that certification? Okay. So, so I think we would and just I appoint. I think we would just appoint her as procurement officer. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then, and then, uh, you know, we can always appoint someone else as chief procurement <coughs> officer once we've got somebody in an appropriate position to do that. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's reasonable. I, I think Lindsay understands that it's. Um, it it may not be. It may not be indefinite. Yep. Okay. So. She probably doesn't want it to be indefinite because it's a she whole crap, crap ton of paperwork. Does. So <laughs> I know I would pull my hair out. So um, I make a motion that we appoint Lindsay Rockwell as uh, our uh, chief procurement officer. Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? Seeing as there's none, all in favor of Beth's motion, uh, please say aye. 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 Have the list from Jacob? Or? Yep. We do have a list from Jacob. And so the uh, my understanding is it's what about three thousand? Yeah. Jacob, about how much is the total value of the items on this list? Um, roughly three thousand six hundred fifty dollars. So three uh, Three thousand six hundred fifty dollars, give or take fifty dollars. I'm going to say, is that fair? Yep. And, okay. Um, it's okay. I'd also like to say um, it's only about eighty percent inventory because I found yeah. a bunch of other boxes. Okay. So, okay. so we may have another list with another uh, with another set of items. That that's All right. fine. All right. And the process and so <coughs> process wise, um, declaring it surplus. Then does that that means it'll go out to muni bid or does that mean that we can then <laughs> it's like, does it have to go to Munibid, or are there other things that can be done to, with it? So it, it doesn't have to go out to Municibid, um, but it's supposed to be typically the process is offer to departments. Mm -hmm. um, usually, if the departments say no, we just go straight to Municibid. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do have the option to offer items to local nonprofits. Um, we and uh, you know, so we could do that as an interim step if we wanted to do that. But if we did that, we should probably do it to you know the way I would propose that we do it. If we're going to offer it to local nonprofits, is to take is to first offer it up to the town departments, mm -hmm. um, and then. Put the list up on our website for two weeks mm -hmm. and indicate that it's available to nonprofits that are chartered within the confines of Brookfield. Yeah, Ser serving Brookfield residents. Yep. I think, would, would, I think that would be a, a, a fair right? determinant. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then if for any items that aren't requested by either a department or a actual and I always get the numbers wrong because I either want to say 401k or 503c or whatever the heck it is. 501c3. Right? By, by a proper. C, right. Um, Listexics have more finu. <laughs> <laughs> um, that we, that at that point we put it out on Municipid. Mm -hmm. So, 
So that would be my recommendation with, with this with this particular list. And then when we get the rest of the list, we can post it as a separate discrete list mm -hmm. of, yeah. sur of stuff that we've declared surplus. So I'd like to accept Jason um, Jacob's uh, um, uh, list as surplus equipment mm -hmm. and declare it thus. Second. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, that's good. Um, just from there's a there's no a, TRS 80s on there that are still in the box, or I, <laughs> yeah, because so. if, okay. if if there is, she she might be setting up a nonprofit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just going to be watching <laughs> Municipid. <me> <laughs> I'll do it legal, man. <laughs> I will look. <laughs> All right, and then uh, just a uh, a question. It's like if the uh, with the understanding that if there is um, contention, if multiple departments or multiple um, nonprofits um, express interest in the same thing, uh, would it fall to us to uh, to figure that out? Then we'd have to figure it out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that that's that's fine. I'm. So we may this may come back to us in a uh, in a couple weeks. If it, there's, it if could, there's though. I don't think anyone's going to be totally arm wrestling over the components. So. I don't think so either. But that's, you know me. I always like to game out the next three steps. Yeah, I know. I, I, and and just, I like and, meetings to be over soon, so we'll just we'll go with what you said. <laughs> I'm good. All in favor of this motion please, uh, to uh, declare this stuff surplus with the understanding of how it's going to be dis, 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 um, repurposed. Please ahead, say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, and uh, Karen, please make sure the list uh, gets into the meeting notes also, yeah. and then. Uh, and I will send it out to the department. Send yeah. out. And then, and then put it on the website, and then we don't get a bite from the department. Yeah. All right. Do we want to make a motion to extend the meeting? Yeah. Make a motion under duress to extend the meeting. <laughs> all right. Second. All right. All in favor of going into express mode, because I think we've done all the hard <laughs> things. Um, please say aye. 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 All right, um, MI, MIIA health rates for fiscal year 25. All right, so I'll make a motion to accept them since we have no choice. Right, second. <laughs> I was gonna say, yep, we gotta take it. Um, all right, uh, all in favor of accepting the, uh, accepting the rates, I almost want to say under duress, um, for, <laughs> for the MIA insurance, um, please say aye. 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 All right, and let's see. There's only one, uh, Karen, there's only one signature here. Who should be signing that, the clerk or me? Oh, for the, for the Myrits? Yes. Oh, no, you sign it. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see. While he's signing, I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, treasurer's resignation. With regrets? With regrets. Uh, second. All right. Um, all in favor of um, of accepting uh, accepting the treasurer's resignation with with uh, regrets. Please say aye. 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 And today is the fourth. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, letter of retirement from our um, plumbing and gas inspector for the last day of the end of the fiscal year. Second. All right. All in favor of um, of acknowledging the retirement uh, or, or of oh, yeah. of the retirement, recognizing the retirement yeah. of Bob Wall, our plumbing and gas inspector. Uh, please say aye. 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 And I think I should have said with regret. I apologize. Could you pass yeah, that? Yeah, I probably should have said that too. All right. And he is like one of the loveliest human beings that I have ever dealt with in an inspection <laughs> role. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, cable studio. All right, so. Um, Let it go. Parade request. All right, we have a parade request, and so the parade. Can the, I make a recommendation for um, the oh, meeting a month from now, since the retirement is for June? There was a, a note in the packet that we have a letter of interest. I think it's from his assistant. Uh, alternate. Yes. Alternate yeah. gas inspector. Yes. Uh, Karen and I discussed that, and I decided to not bring that up in today's meeting just because it was already chock full. Yep. But yes, we so uh, we definitely will be discussing that in a future meeting. Okay. All right. So the parade route is, in short, it's from the school to the common. Officially, uh, the parade begins at uh, will begin at Brookfield Elementary, heading west on Central Street. 
Oh, it, uh, turn left on Pleasant Street, a right onto Lincoln Street, and then follow Lincoln Street to the Common. So it doesn't go straight down Central Street. They're gonna. They're not going. They're gonna turn left. They're not going. We're not going to the cemetery. This route is only to the Common. So it's gonna go down Central Street, turn left on first left onto Pleasant Street, and the right on Lincoln Street past the library to the Common. And I expect we're then going to go down Common Street, Common Street to the mall, though it doesn't say that. So we may just, seems like we're ending near the gazebo, which is not what I expected, but. They may be setting it up differently because they, they've they, got a different. They have, yeah, they have new people doing it. They may yeah. be trying something different. I am, you know what? I'm happy they're planning it and I'll be happy to show up and, and I will smile and nod as, as needed. Sounds like a plan. All right, so, so I will um, I will take a um, motion to approve the uh, parade permit. Second. All right. All in favor of uh, approving the parade permit as um, as noted, please say aye. 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 All right. And this is something we all sign. All right. Uh, number fourteen. Individual alarm codes. Um, just. I would like everyone who has access, after hours access to the building to have their own individual alarm code. Well past time. All right. Uh, um, in, uh, this will mean that as people get added and removed from the system, we will have to um, have a technician out to do the programming. But I think, I don't think this is something we can program ourselves. Or I think it absolutely is. I think you have to just get a, one person needs to have an admin code to be able to add and remove people. Okay. My, okay. That's. If we can do it that way, I'm for it. My, th what I have in my head, which may be right or may be wrong, is that given the interface on that thing, which all just punching in code, you can make a mistake and you can really screw things up. So as long as we are confident we're not going to screw things up, I don't care. I'm not paying for a technician every time somebody else needs an, an access code. Okay. I, I don't know that it happens all that often, but... Okay. This is it like a garage door program? <laughs> we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can figure, we can figure it out. Yeah. Is my thought. Yep. Is that um, we'll. So we'll we might need to bring a technician out to train our code admin person. Yes. But I think, yeah. I think beyond that, I, my, I don't think we're gonna. Yeah. Have to my my thought my thought is it's like we need someone local who can enable a new code mm -hmm. and disable an existing code. Yep. It's like and so yeah we can definitely look into that and find someone who'd be in. E here who would be willing to take on that role who who do you want to have responsible for getting that established is it going to be one of us is it, are we asking the town hall improvement committee or i i don't know i, would I say hadn't town, thought that part. i'd say town hall improvement committee i think i think we would ask the town hall i think we should ask the town hall improvement committee if they would be kind enough to take lead on that yes and uh, on on getting that on getting that arranged, um, the uh, the town, and then we'll uh, we'll need to uh, in, in, we'll need uh, someone to make sure we know who is who currently has access and make sure that they that they get their codes so that they can be entered. Because when we make this change, anyone who got missed is going to find their the old code is no longer working. Right. And. The alarm's kind of loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And you know, you're across the street. I know, because usually I get the text. And hopefully I'm watching it so that you don't have to come from south of the river to yep. check it out. I know. It's like, I feel bad, but it's just like, she lives right across the street. Beth, I got paged out for the alarm. Can you go check, please? <laughs> All right, so, and that's good. So, um, Karen, do we have a current list of people who have authorized access to this building after hours? No, I do not have a list, but I can figure it out. We okay. Figure out who has it. All right. Um, would you, when you assemble a list, would you please yeah. send it to us? Yeah. And I think we should also psych circulate it to the departments to make sure that all the department heads, if they feel they need access, that they can speak up, or if they don't need access, they can say, "I don't need it." And then, I'm an idiot. and then from there, and then from there, and uh, if you could get that out to them next week, and then we should also, um, uh, Karen, could you also please contact all of the boards and committees? Because I know that um, in the past, advisory has had the um, has yeah, had a code exactly, so that they yeah. can do after hours meetings, and I'm sure other boards and committees do also. And we'll need to make sure that they, if they ha if they have access, that they continue to have access. 
And that'll also give us a chance to kind of refresh the list. If people had access but they don't need it, we'll scrub them out. If people don't technically have that, don't, aren't supposed to have access but they do, they won't survive the uh, reorganization. Okay. So I'll send an email. Okay. And we'll take a moment while some paperwork gets signed. Brad, would you entertain us with the dance? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to sing this time. Thank you for taking care of that, Beth. So um, I will take a uh, motion to um, to uh, to move to personalized alarm codes. Um, and, uh, motion to move to personalize okay. alarm codes and to uh, request uh, Town Hall Improvement Committee assistance in establishing them. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. And then my thought is we'll, we should probably ask Town Hall if, to, to implement a, what they think is a good length. My, thought, my first thought was six, but my thought was that may not be enough to uh, easily avoid conflict. Six is Collision. Enough. Okay. Depends on how many people we have. Four gives you gives you nine hundred and ninety nine combinations. So are we going to assign them, or are we going to let people pick? If well, people can, pick, collisions are much riskier. All right. Six we, is plenty. All right. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to argue. All right. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Oh, God, I didn't see this if one. If there's a collision, we can always have them flip for it. Yep. So. All right. And so, um, all right, I'm going to jump over number 15 because I want to get, I want to bang out the last couple and then we can come back to this one. So we're, uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to move straight to number 16. Uh, I'll Eric, make a motion to accept with regrets. Um, all right, acknowledge with, acknowledge, acknowledge with regret? Yeah. All right. Uh, Second. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor of acknowledging Eric's um, resignation uh, with regret, uh, Eric Whittemore from the Highway Department, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion to approve the select board minutes for 3724 as uh, provided earlier. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor of the accepting, approving the minutes from 3724, please say aye. 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 All right, and uh, acknowledging the EMS reports for January and February. Motion to acknowledge the EMS reports. Um, were, were there any big anniversaries on those? Uh, I do want to at least verbally acknowledge that. Uh, and a, a, no. uh, let's see, hold on. Uh, for there were none in January. In February, we have Peter, Mar Peter Martel, 38, 38 years. years. Uh, Matt Graves, 32 years. And uh, Dave Martel, 30 years. These are all significant. Yeah. So Thanks. it's it's really pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the service to the community is pretty impressive. The length of time people have stuck by it. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Thanks. For Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and everyone. All right. So, do we do we get that motion seconded? Yes. All right. Then all in favor of acknowledging the reports for January and February, please say aye. 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 All right. And now an item number 15, last on our list, but not last in our hearts, the warrant articles. There we go. Oh, and this doesn't... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going through minutes. Yeah. And we don't have the spreadsheet here, so I gotta call that up. Unless someone brought a copy of the spreadsheet. I'm going through chat GPT. I'll be honest. Okay. I want to see what it comes up with. So who's invoking chat GPT? <laughs> the uh, annual report. Okay. Unless you want to write it. <laughs> uh, nope. I do not. Okay. 
Um, I'm three, but then it changed my name. But I don't know if it matters. And so. And so my thinking was that we wanted, the, the free cash is oversubscribed. <laughs> and so we Yes. But it also may not be, we may not have made good decisions about. Um, yeah, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see if we could, if there were some easy decisions we could make that could take pressure off of that. Okay. And let's start with the low hanging fruit. Because I know that we have, um, let's see. The, was the police department in there? Did you see that email? Um, oh, about the. Um, about cruiser. The, 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 the uh, cruiser? Yeah. There, there was one in the, in, the, in the version Kelly sent me, I saw one in there, and that's why I made the effort to add it, because I wasn't expecting it. And then Chief Martell said that they didn't ask for one, so we're good. It's, it's good. Um, and so, I was just really expecting to have the spreadsheet, because that's how I approach it. My computer's on the fritz. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, yep. yes. Can you make a copy of that for me, Jeff? Or can you make a copy for everyone? Thank you. Thank you, Karen. That was from a couple of days ago, so I don't know if it's changed. I don't think so. I remember the note. Was it 824 on the bottom of that? Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the postcard one. Yeah. The one that she sent out the other day. Yeah. My thought was that we would talk about money ones first. I don't think the other ones are as important. Can I make a comment? Um, uh, let's see. I, 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 I'm. My, my thought. My thought is that the um, is that we will be talking. To, is that in a week or two weeks we'll be talking to the advisory committee in joint session about this, and so. I was going to say, unless there's something, um, I would say, uh, Jeff is chair of the advisory committee. Is there anything urgent or large that we? Two, two points of clarification. Um, if I may. Um, or do you want me to wait for Brad to come back? Or? Do you? I'll just take. Um, or I can talk to you afterwards. Too. Okay. Convenient for you. Okay. Well, it's like if it, if it doesn't need to be said in the meeting, then let's save it till afterwards. I'm not sure if it does or doesn't, but I just want everyone to, to hear it. I just want to make sure we're on, because I don't want to spend five hours at the joint session going over line by line. Yeah. And, and that's one of the reasons we're, we are going over this now ahead of the meeting, is so that we can kind of get our thoughts in order, and we can come to the meeting with you saying, here's, here's our thoughts on the matter. You can say, here are our thoughts on the matter, and then we can work through any right, differences so we have. The war is not the issue, it's just the budget, because I don't know who's controlling it from your end now, from the administrator's end now, since mm -hmm. all we have is the original sheet. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll talk the, the, the board can't talk about that because it's not on the agenda. Gotcha. And so therefore, I will, as chair, I will represent the board in that direct discussion with you outside of, outside of the meeting. Is that fair? Perfect. Uh, let's see. I mean, Sarah, are you all set, or is is? I just have a comment. The the first item but on the spreadsheet, I couldn't find the more the article number. Okay, that's that's, that's all. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, you find one. Okay. So I was just wondering that was... if you could find it and give me the article number, if it could, or if you could find out if it still is an article number or an article item. I'm I I will get that for you. I went okay. I went through the articles. Um, yeah, yeah, and I just couldn't find it, so I just wanted to. Yeah, I. I remember, I remember seeing it, and oh, there we go. Uh, well, there's no article number, but uh, let's see. The library article is in the version I have. It's three or four after road reconstruction and two after the fuel system. 
for, okay. for highway is is where I have it located. Okay. So it's it's in here. Thank you. I couldn't find it. So mm -hmm. thanks. No. I this may be a newer version. All right. So we've got this. So what's our total? The uh, we have eight hundred twenty-six thousand dollars worth of requests. And we have five hundred forty-four thousand dollars worth of free cash. So the first thing I want to discuss, actually, is that is the backhoe, mm -hmm. especially one getting it in its entirety, paid up front, out of free cash, makes zero sense, right? Um, and historically speaking, it is allowable to put this on a three-year lease purchase and do it through Chapter 90 money. So that's $179,000 off the table. That would be my recommendation. I'm, I'm good with that. My thought, I, I, was, I, I had reached out to Gary and asked him about the urgency of this So purchase. I will tell you, it's a fairly urgent purchase because that backhoe is held together with bailing wire and duct tape. Okay, they actually yeah. the, they've the, been mulling it over and over yeah i mean like they literally rebuilt the thing again this winter it might make it another year but it's pretty shady mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> and yeah and my, my and that was my thought was going it's a it's a large purchase it's going to benefit for the town for many years and that is that is a very appropriate um i'd like to make a motion to accept a comment from the accountant um yeah, I don't have an issue with that. No, no, she's making a motion. Oh, so, second. All right. All in favor of uh, entertaining a uh, comment from the I accountant on this matter. So <laughs> actually, you know what? Thank you. I, I, actually, I'm, I, I don't know that I needed that. But um, Lori, as the town accountant, could you please help us understand the, fi the financial details around this purchase? You could actually put that on as an article to authorize borrowing in case you can't do Chapter 90. That's a great idea. And you have some sort of a funding source, you can apply to Chapter 90. And if you have to, you could borrow. If not, you don't ever have to use the borrowing. But that gets you the back. So yeah, either way. Yeah. It is either way. Yeah, if, if Chapter 90 money is available, we can use that. If it's not, then borrow. That's a, yeah, that's a great idea. To, yeah. to, to authorize the borrowing. Just authorize it. Yeah. And then if you don't use it, you don't use it. And so we'll you're and you're, you're the covered. Yep. Yeah. I'm, the, the I'm one, hand numbering these yeah. just so that we can try to find them. Um, where the heck is that? One? Yes. Yes. But I, I mean that that for, that's an easy way to s start to get it. And it says here they've got an allow the trade in. All right. Where's the one? Okay. See if the and it's actually on here is vote to raise an appropriate transfer or borrow of sum of money. Right. So I think we can leave that article mm -hmm. the way it is. I think we can. It, we can do it as a borrow article, but then if we choose to fund it from Chapter 90, once we've looked at the broader, like, like, because one of the things I'd like to do is get a five-year plan, like whoever winds up our highway super, mm -hmm. then we put a five-year plan in place, at least around the highway department. And and that, they, if they think they're gonna need the Chapter 90 for projects, then we have the option to borrow for the, mm -hmm. for the Yeah, I, my, my, I guess my other concern is that if we use Chapter 90, would that be using a big chunk of Chapter, like all of our Chapter 90 money in well, one year? Because it's no, like, if we do a three-year lease, it would we'd be using about a third of our Chapter 90 money per year to pay the lease on the backhoe, and you get enough use out of the backhoe depending on how many projects they do in house. Sometimes that would be worth it, and sometimes it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just compared to having to yeah. rent one. So, so, and we don't have a borrow sheet in this budget that I see that Kelly sent over, so I'm going to add a tab in there. Although she sent it as a local copy to everybody, so we probably want to put something out that's shared. I, I think Kelly made a shared copy somewhere. Okay. I, the last email she sent, uh, uh, the operating budget, she said she attached a copy to everyone, but there is a shared copy somewhere that's not attached and so the update should should go in the shared that's one of the things i'm planning to uh i, I was hoping to get to talk to karen about today i'll have to come in on monday and okay. get that organized a little bit better I'm, just, I'm gonna just move that literally just move that i'm gonna uh i'm gonna just keep a local copy and i'm gonna make a borrow sheet and move that one over. yeah we and we can we can whatever you do we can port that into the shared one yeah when when we uh give put in its final home 
So but yeah, I'm, I'm, kind of I'm intending to create a OneDrive folder for a town meeting that will have the official budget, the, uh, the warrant book, right. and, the, uh, and the spreadsheets for tracking this. Though maybe this, maybe this spreadsheet tracking just goes into the budget sheet. That's where I typically did it when I was on advisory. We just had a tab for warrant article tracking. Let's see where that leaves us. Oh, of course. Okay, so that puts us. So that gets us within a hundred and two thousand if mm -hmm. everything get approved. Yep, and then. I like the idea of the fuel system, but that's a lot of money for for something that I don't know how broke it is. Because, where, is where is that? Fuel system, it's right under Backhoe. Forty thousand dollars. I think they want basically what Gary's envisioning is a new gasoline and diesel pumping system that is uh, basically key fob activated. So it would track who's dispensing fuel and how much they're dispensing. Well, we changed the locks. That's a good start. <laughs> and, 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 and that's what I'm saying. It's like we, we, we just changed the lock or, we, or we're, we're in the process of changing the lock. And so therefore, it's like given that we're oversubscribed, I'm not sure how this stacks up against all the other needs here. Yeah. And so to me, it's like I'm, I'm thinking so this I, is something think, that could get kicked down the road. Yeah. I, I think that's a hold for a future year kind of thing. Yeah. And and we and we are finding a way to get him his backhoe. Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna so I'm I'm hearing concurrence from the board. So I'm gonna mark that we're intending yeah. to um, pull I'm, the fuel I'm system. I'm making a hold for future year tab as well. Okay. Good idea. Uh, that's a that's a that's a better way to say it. We're deferring it to a future year. Yeah, I like that idea. And then. And so that that gets it that that reduces the gap to a little over sixty k. Yep. And so then the other one that catches. So what's interesting my, in here is it's what's that, Brad? The, the elevator. It says reallocate the funds in the platform left to include elevator option. Yeah. That's just a reallocation. Well, so why is it? Adding. Yeah, so I, I think the intention cash. was to allocate $76,000 of free cash to the elevator and take the $72,000 in okay. the warrant article for the platform lift and put that into the elevator warrant account also for a total of $146,000. Mm -hmm. Though, to my mind, the elevator might be a future year also. I mean, I, 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 would, I would love to do something to get that upstairs usable by the whole town. But it's just, just from a priority standpoint, the um, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing that as as high a priority as other stuff. What do you guys think? Where um, I'd, the, I'd like to know more why I mean 76 is a specific number. Um, I expect it's based on some of the estimates that Kelly did, or right. and so, but the. I guess my question is, is that do, if we want to allocate that $76,000 to the elevator, we're going to have to find $60,000 among the other articles in order to get, in order to fit our spending inside the uh, free cash perimeter. So let me ask something. And I'm sure this is a terrible question to ask, but I know we talked about setting up a roof stabilization, but what's in our current stabilization? I we we, we have we have several stabilizations. We have an operating stabilization fund. We have a capital stabilization fund, and we have the roof stabilization fund. Right. And so and the roof and, and so and, and those are their purposes and, and is obvious. Vis a vis our our total town budget, how much stabilization do we have? Budget. Yeah. <laughs> so, do we actually need to put into a separate roof stabilization, or can we? Could we or set up a roof stabilization as a transfer from one of the existing stabilization accounts? My understanding was there was some sort of, I don't think, formal agreement with the school. Right. With regards to the roof replacement that we that we'd start earmarking money. Yes, which is what we did. So I believe there's a hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, that's the number I was going to. The roof stabilization right now. Right. I don't know what the total cost. 
of this what our commitment to the roof yeah. is going we got to be. Some, we got some math relative to total cost at the last meeting and, right. it de and depending on the approach they take it was anywhere from 500 to eight hundred thousand dollars right so but my thought is is that if our if our general stabilization is really healthy right now mm -hmm. there's no reason why we couldn't transfer money from the general stabilization to the roof stabilization to kind of earmark it for that project rather than taking it out of free cash. Personally, that'd be the first place I'd go so long as we keep our ratio of stabilization to our operating budget healthy. I believe our, I, I talked to Kelly about this, my recollection is that the, st the operation stabilization account is at about 8% of the budget. Okay. Which is but good. I mean, it's, overall, it's not over, it's not overly rich, but that would be at eight percent of the budget. That would be eight hundred about eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and 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 I know you're referring to them as separate stabilization accounts, but the whole point of stabilization accounts is just that it, they exist. So so we're not changing our overall ratio of stabilization funds mm -hmm. to our operating budget by moving it from one stabilization account to another because that's what it's there for is to deal with these big like future needs right that's why we put it in a rainy day fund because we mm -hmm. know it's going to rain so um yeah, I but, mean, I, but that, I believe i believe the capital stabilization fund and the and the roof stabilization fund are in addition to the general stabilization fund right but they're all just yeah. st they're just different flavors of the same money right mm -hmm. and they're, it's, they're, it's they're being they're being they're be they're 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 aimed at different future expenses right so this would take it out of generally, we don't know what we're going to want to spend it on and puts it into that we know we've got to pay for a school roof. That would be my recommendation rather than taking it out of current free cash. And that gets us, that gets us where we need to get to. Mm-hmm. You're saying do one, do the elevator one out of the state or the, or the no, roof? No, the, the roof roof. do the roof stabilization out of the general stabilization fund. And that yeah. gets us yeah. under our free cash. Yeah. So, 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 in, well, so, no, no, the, the no. separate. There, there's no. The, that's not a. That's not a, a stabilization fund. The elevator is basically allocating a warrant article account line item that takes the lift platform money that we already allocated. It adds in another seventy-six thousand dollars of this year's free cash to get us to the hundred and. Forty-four or whatever thousand dollars that we need in order to put a, a two-floor elevator into this building to get free act, full, full and free access to the second floor to be able to start using it appropriately because it'll then be handicapped accessible. And moving from general to roof is perfectly acceptable. That's actually how we got the initial roof money to begin with. Was that we moved, we moved it from capital to roof? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I remembered yeah, we've yes. done it in the past. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't figure last, it was a last year. I didn't figure it was an issue, so that would be a, a transfer yes. fundamentally. I think that's something I could live with. I'd want I'd want a noodle on the number sum, but my thought is that I could go with that now, and if it bothers me, I can I can bring it up later. Yeah, we can discuss it later. But if if we wanted to just like from a standpoint of at least putting us, you know. Putting us dealing with numbers that are based fundamentally in some sort of reality math that gets us through town meeting. That those would be the two changes I would make because that would put us with about twelve thousand nine hundred dollars left in in free cash after if everything else got voted. If everything mm -hmm. got voted as it's in, in there, we'd yeah. still have what's considered like the generally acceptable slush left over in free cash that could just be allowed to roll over to the following. Yeah, that, that would roll over and, and buoy up the uh, the next year's free cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Where is the 76 coming from? What? Free cash. No, I know. I don't know. Oh, just, oh, wait, I'm, which I'm article? I'm looking off the spreadsheet and then we just we need to find the article. What, you're looking for a seventy-six thousand dollar article. Oh, it's right here. It's on the same page. It's right. It's on the same page as the revolving 72. fund. It's seventy-two. Right, but in here it has amount well, seventy-six. No. Well, actually, this is the, well. That's the this is to transfer the funds that are already there. Right. There's so then there right? should be one for so seventy-six. There should be one for to to add. Yeah, to add to that. 
And it may be that it's missing. She may have missed it. Because I'm just wondering what... Okay, here it is. Uh, oh, no, that's the roof stabilization one. So, so, so we need to take the term free cash out of that article from, would we just say general stabilization? Yes, I think that, they, that was what we discussed was using the general stabilization fund to, okay. and transferring that to the roof stabilization. Okay, so home rule. I don't see. You know, one thing I do want to check is uh, um, I see we have an article for age 65 exemption for one member of the fire department. I think there was a second member of the fire department that may be eligible for that. Or maybe able to benefit from it? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Peter's not still here. Yeah, so Peter's we'll... not still no, here. It, it was actually in his thing, it was in his packet. So I thought, um, oh, what's, what's, what's Bill's last name? I should know Bill's last name. Come on. I've got the farm down on 148, and I cannot, and I've got his face in my head, and I can't think of his last name. <coughs> but anyway, we can revisit that on time when we're not talking the money, and we're not already almost creeping up on 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take it as an action to check with the chief about that non-money article and see if there's anybody else that needs to get added onto there. Yeah. And then I know that on, at one point we, uh, we had talked about putting a key code entry system or a key fob entry system for the uh, town hall, but there's no, es there's no, th no estimate has been made for that. And so I don't know at this point if we... I think it's also, a, it was a nice to have, and I think if we are at least for going with the discrete alarm codes. I, 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 I was going to the same place as saying that I, it's like, with the individual alarm codes and the uh, upgraded uh, video recording system that we're working towards, yeah. is that I think that's good progress. It's a future and, year. And we should... And we should not a future year. Yeah. And we should charge, uh, uh, I would say, uh, could I get a motion to uh, request Town Hall Improvement Committee to investigate the key list, the key fob base entry system? Yeah, I'll give you that motion. Okay. Uh, second. All right, uh, thank you. So uh, uh, all in favor of uh, asking Town Hall Improvement Committee to, uh, to look into the uh, key fob entry system, please say aye. 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 All right, thank you. And so, and therefore, I will, uh, that will come off the board for this year. And we can then try and do it a, uh, in a smarter way. And actually, we should probably tie and try and tie that into the fire alarm system that is in progress. But there's no, uh, there's no amount there anyways. I know. Because, uh, and that's, the reason we don't have an amount is no one's looked into right, it. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so that's, that's, that's the first thing. It's like, what are our options and what do they cost? What do they recommend? And then I am trying to get smarter on the, uh, I know we have an open co contract with an engineer for a fire alarm system. And I know, Karen, I know you responded to me. I just did not have a chance to read that today. So it's like, just understand where we are in that and who's, who's going to be our point of contact for that going forward. Because we hired the engineer to handle the bidding. Yeah, and I just yeah. don't know what the engineer has done for us yet. I don't know, do you want me to call and find out? Um, I may, I, 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 may, I may reach out to Kelly just for the, a, iron, a, the irons in the fire email that she sent, I believe has that. Oh, good. Thank you. I, again, I have not had a chance to read that, but if it's, okay, <laughs> if it's in there, I will catch up on that. It's like, it's and I went through her. I mean, I don't know if we want to have a discussion in a future meeting. I did meet with her and go through the irons in the fire to get just more mm -hmm. clarity on it. Okay. We should, we should probably have that discussion, but not tonight. Right. All right, so with the, uh, hold on, and roof, st roof stabilization. Um, stab doing, uh, doing, the, doing the roof stabilization money from the general stabilization rather than free cash. Between that, um, removing the fuel, uh, deferring the fuel system, and um, 
planning to fund the backhoe through a um, bar borrowing slash uh, leasing nine. with uh, leasing with the possibility of chapter 90 money doing that yeah is that um, I, I that that brings us into the green yes for free cash yes yeah, yes for free cash the operating budget is a different story and I think that means that we can and then I guess just this is our chance is there any um, <coughs> Are there any concerns with any of the remaining articles that are that are on the board here? So that's what we have left after. Yep. Yeah, and I just shared the link to both of you okay. about my my working copy here that I'm doing all the changes in. Thank you. So, um, yeah. So that and that leaves us with like twelve twelve thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars left, mm -hmm. which is a, a decent target. And it still leaves us putting a good chunk in OPEB, which I know we're way behind, but it's something that's better than nothing. Yeah, I, I, I think the important thing is to demonstrate that we're working on working through that. I do want to understand, you know, and I know we haven't necessarily had the conversation, but I'm, I'm curious around, and I'm not curious enough to talk about it tonight, but in a future meeting, let's make sure we understand what the finished Green Street project represents, because I think that's something that we need a, a information sheet on town meeting or a, a, maybe not in the warrant but separate of it because i think people are going to be like what the hell mm -hmm. when they see that so yeah i mean yeah we, we need to explain why we're in, why we need that money yep yeah i think yeah. we need to be and that's to now that's being managed by cdb uh cmrpg or CMRPC. Well, it was CMRPC? yeah it was originally a cbdg grant project and I guess I'm just trying to I don't I guess who's running that project that that's CMRPC yeah okay so and but and it's grant money so Kathy will be on top of it right well or if if, if CMRPC is running it again, she's not involved I think, no I don't think she usually is typically involved usually that's between them and us they would have sent us invoices and we would mm -hmm. have signed them off and now, and I don't know what communication landed this on the warrant. So I'd like, I'd like, a, and maybe it's buried in my email, which is entirely possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we may need but, to. Uh, but we I want to make sure we have an executive summary for the townspeople. Maybe because that came up on our advisory committee meeting. So if there's anything you could come up in the next two weeks, that would be helpful. I'm going to go look in my or email and see yeah. if I just. Uh, my something. my hope is that we will have our heads around that in time for our meeting, Jeff. I'm blocking, blocking time out. Well, for, yeah, I, well, you know what? When me and Bob are both concerned about the same thing, you know it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Get, mark that one on your calendar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear diary. <laughs> oh, yep, there it is from back in. So we, we managed to do this, and we only had to cut one thing, found alternate funding for two others. Right. That at least puts us in a position where, you know, we're, we're not walking in with more on the warrant than what we can, what we yeah. can pay for. No, we, 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 we can't put that and, in front of the town. Yeah, and the flip side of it is, is I, I, I'm not, I don't feel bad about putting any of the rest of them in front of the town. I think they're all legitimate work that we need to do to keep the lights on and the trains on time, mm -hmm. fundamentally. So. Yeah. Uh, if anybody I wants will, to I will want to look into $575 gravel. for the flowers on the common, then <laughs> get over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 do, I do want to look into um, how much money we spent on, uh, or how much of that gravel for private roads money was expended from last year. Because I think we did that as a warrant article last year and we're topping it up. Oh, really? So do we still have, we still have money Actually, you know what? Down? We haven't spent a penny of that I because it, say, it, we have it. to approve the expenditure of those resources. Right. So we haven't spent anything so on that. Do we want to take that off because the money's still there from the prior year? I would, if we haven't spent any money this I year. I think we I had would, it that we were going to do it every year or something. Yeah, but I don't, see, I don't see a value to putting the same amount of money in every year if none of it's going out. 
I, I think if we if we allocated three thousand dollars last year, twenty five hundred. Thank you, Lori. If we, we allocated twenty five hundred last year, no one's asked for any of it because it it hasn't come to us, and so therefore, why put why put more money in there when it's not needed? I would say. Uh, Jeff, as the uh, chair of the finance committee, what is uh, what? Uh, I can see you waving here. What do you need? We just had this discussion, but my only caveat was that people are not going to want to put gravel in when it still is in spring, and you know stuff could get washed out or whatever. So there might be an influx of, you know. We request. We approved this money in June of last year. They had all summer and all fall to ask for it. And I if they not, and Jeff, if I'm they just if bringing up the hypothetical, you know, you know what we could do. We is, could, so I don't think there's a dollar amount in the article. What we could do is just leave it on there. Mm -hmm. And so we're already at the point where we're 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 we've got appropriate headspace. We could yeah. leave the article on there, so long as it doesn't. And, and I actually really despise the any more article that has the sum in the, the verbiage and if we can take all of that out as a best practice let's do that even when we think we know what the dollars are mm -hmm. because stuff just gets um, it, it is crazy. but I mean don't don't we owe the town a a heads up on how much we we're going to be asking for? We can leave it in the for? comments, just not in the text. Oh, okay, of that's the fine. That's article. fine. Oh, thank you. I, okay. Okay. It should be in the, Good. Yes, it should be in the motion only. Okay. And 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 we, you know, yeah, it just it needs to not be in the article hmm. verbiage. Okay. Right. Got and, it. And I, would I, I understand that makes sense. And I would actually, in front of even the ones that just have the value down below, I would put estimated at, mm -hmm. so that people see it. We're transparent yeah. about it, mm -hmm. but and that it, but that it is. It's we, clearly it, indicated it, it could that, it's not, that that it could change, mm -hmm. and that it's not part of the what we're stuck to yeah. with the warrant. And and I think if it if it's a drastic right. change, I think it, we can explain why. And if it's a change of like if it's a minor change, it's like yeah, the estimate so, solidified. So right now that's Article Seventeen. If you number them in the order that it's on the sheet, mm -hmm. and I would just say that one's one that doesn't have the number in the motion, so we can mm -hmm. just leave it on there. If we get people between now and town meeting that come looking for gravel or at or ask that we we do the work um, on the road, right? If it gets spent, it gets spent. We leave it on there, but knowing that there's the potential, we can zero that out when we get there and just pass it over. Mm -hmm. Yay! I am good with that. And that, that would satisfy Marty, I think, because he just raised that question an hour ago. Yeah. So I, I think that puts us in a good spot. So, and that would leave us with closer to sixteen thousand dollars, ish. Mm -hmm. So. Um, All right. Any other issues or concerns with the uh, warrant? Since we have it open for discussion, before we uh, before we close this last one out. All right, seeing as there is none, the warrant will remain open. And let's see. And Karen, you have the, um, you have the, uh, the, the funding changes that we've proposed and the, uh, the removal of the uh, fuel system. With our, with our regrets to Gary, it's just I, I don't see a way of swinging that. It's like, if you, can make, if you want to make a persuasive case, we can come back and consider it again. Anything else? Now there's a shared drive that Jacob uh, put in the in the drive on the computer. So ch is anyone changing this? I don't know. Well, if that's what you're well, but about. Uh, Karen, well, the, the, he created a meetings drive last week, or the last time right, we were but, here. But that drive, Kelly went in and put. That's where she put these. Yes, I, but I'm saying we we need a different we need a different shared drive than. I mean, meetings. It's a, yeah, it's, a it's a different folder. But okay. it's still is it a subfolder? Is it a subfolder next to all those individual select board meetings? I, I believe it is. Yes. Yes. And, and so they are they are under a folder named meetings. Okay. And that's and that's my concern is okay. that right. is that I'd, I'd rather have meetings and then we have and I'd rather ATM just be completely separate. I mean we can use that as a holding place now, but otherwise it's like. It's it just I don't know okay. it, it 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 bugs me. All 
brings Never had to use this. Memories, Tom, that's all. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff, to make you relive those. Yeah. All right, um, I guess I'm going to have to come out and ask it. Do we need to talk about anything else, or can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn. I clearly need to eat. At 9.03. <laughs> All in sorry, favor of adjourning this meeting, <laughs> please say aye. I didn't aye. either. <laughs> All, right. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 We are done. <laughs>